Daily. S-D-P-P. The Steve Dangle Podcast. With your hosts, Steve Dangle, Adam Wilde, and Jesse Blake. Let's go! And we are officially sold out for Steve Dangle Takeover Night. Hey! Hooray! That's for next. Nick. That's going to be Sunday. Uh, for anybody to get the VIP bund- bundle, that skate starts around noon and the game starts at 2 and the podcast probably around 6.30, 7 o'clock. And then there's a Leafs game at 9. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that I will be listening to on the radio. No, on the drive home. On the drive home. That'll be great. Because I am not staying. Um, that is bad logistics for a dad. Now, here's the thing. Uh, if you still want to come uh, and you missed out on the rest of it and you're like, hey, last minute, why don't we just go? Why don't we just go to the game? Mm-hmm. Uh, because uh, Steve and Jesse and I are going to be involved in a whole bunch of like um, intermission stuff. I know there's some games. No, keep it a secret. I'm not going to say okay, there's something good. specifically planned for Steve. Yeah. Can I say that? No. Like, keep I it secrets. <laughs> what? Like, ignore Man, that. I, say that. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Didn't say oh, that. my God. He it. doesn't know. He doesn't know. <laughs> but we know. Anyway, if you want to go to the game. Oh, no. The uh, the Frontenacs have been generous enough to <sighs> discount tickets. So all you have to do is go to, um, uh, you know, go on the Frontenacs website or Ticketmaster. And again, it is this Sunday versus Saginaw. The promo code is Dangle. Spell it, Steve. D-A-N-G-L-E. Dangle. What does Dangle. that get you? What? What does that get you? That gets you discounted tickets to the game. How much? Uh, well, they're going to be nineteen bucks, which is oh yeah, yeah. So I think that's, that's less than twenty. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's a it's a pretty solid little discount. Um, and what a surprise! Because we did was have that to, it? Because people were like, I'm not sure about my weekend plans. Still want to come out and see us. So that's mm-hmm. so that's how you get your nineteen dollar tickets. So you get to come to the game, but the podcast afterward at the merchant is sold out. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, but we'll come and we'll high five, and it'll be fun. And we are also getting front next jerseys, which I I'm I'm wondering how former resident of Oshawa Steve feels about putting one of those on. That's uh, it's no Peterborough Pete's jersey. No, I think. That might be a bridge too far for the Jens. <laughs> Although the Peets have invited us. I have don't they? know if you saw that on Twitter. What? Yeah, I forgot to. I got to pass that along to you. You didn't Actually, tell me that. I know. That's my bad. And like the, the pizza Twitter account? They said come to a game or something? Yeah. Nice. I thought you said pizza. And I was like, oh. what? <laughs> That'd be the better. entire Twitter account of pizza. <laughs> the official <laughs> Twitter account of pizza. Steve, that would be a childhood Steve. dream. Uh-huh. You mean Italy? Yes. Uh, oh, hey. Yes. <laughs> Apparently, Italy didn't invent pizza. Oh, no. Who Italians it? in America invented pizza, but not Italian. That makes a lot more sense. Oh, so yeah. it's American food then. Yeah. Yes. That makes a lot more sense. Exactly. All right. Well, they did a good job. I love that. I'm I excited thought, for Sunday. Sunday is going to be a riot. Oh, Except yeah. for the drives, like there and back. Everything in between is going to be like an absolute blast. Can't be worse than the last one. <laughs> it, it could. It could, actually. Yeah. Uh, I saw there's rain in the forecast, and um, it could be worse because that could lead to ice. Oh, right. good. Yeah. Crazy thing about being along a lake is sometimes the wind freezes things. Yeah. It's crazy. You know, <laughs> um, you know, it's funny. Toronto got like zero snow this weekend. Uh, Peterborough got like two feet. It did not. It did not stop snowing from the end of or from fr- Friday to Sunday morning. Didn't stop. It is bullshit cold though. It is bullshit oh, yeah. cold. And and Buffalo and yeah. Detroit really got it too. Mm-hmm. Toronto just for whatever reason we're in like some slipstream. We don't get anything. Producer Drew, I'm pretty sure wasn't a hundred percent kidding when he pitched the idea of us going to Buffalo with a camera and just helping to shovel out. The Bill Stadium. He also asked me if I wanted. He's like, well, if it, last week he was trying to get me to go to see the Steelers there because the Steelers are playing today. They were supposed to play yesterday. Yeah, if it was Saturday, like if they got booked for the Saturday game, like that'd be a good day. It would have been Drew fun. just yeah. loves Old. being an opposing fan. Oh, at game. Listen, if you're angry at Drew, that's when he's in his element. No, that yes. would have been that would have been his team. Like he's a Bills fan. It's in Buffalo. Yeah, but Adam Steelers. Oh, he he wanted Adam to be the opponent. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I guess that's true. Yeah, yeah you're I right. You're right. Yeah. But but it, but what we did, what we said about Drew remains the same. Yeah. If Would you're you, mad at him, he's in his element. Answer this: <laughs> Would you have worn an opposing team's jersey to an NFL playoff game? Yes, in Buffalo. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah City of good neighbors. Absolutely. Uh, there. Listen, Buffalo Bills fans are intense. They're a lot of fun. They're also a little crazy with the stunts that they're pulling with the, you know, slamming through the tables or whatever, but they're not like, they're, they're not going to like, I, I don't think they're going to hurt you like Philadelphia, <laughs> Philadelphia, which is in a different, like they're the Steelers and Phillies or sorry, Steelers and Eagles would never play each other unless it was in the Super Bowl uh, in the playoffs. But 
like Philadelphia, I would be intimidated for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like I think, you know, anybody that throws quarters at Santa Claus, I'm like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I got, you know, I got <laughs> that. I mean, like you guys know this, but, but they're the, the old where the Eagles used to play. There was a jail in the basement. Yeah, I believe that. Yeah. So like, it's, you know, it's just a different, different culture, city to city. There's been, uh, there's is, there been any other, is there any other city you'd be freaked out, Jesse, in the NFL to go and wear an opposing jersey? I, the thing about. Like, I think because you're you're afraid of physical violence, right? Sure. I'm yeah, as long fan. as you're not an asshole. That's, I feel fun. like you won't get hit in the face unless you're like antagonizing people. Yeah. I feel like nobody's just going to randomly come and assault you yeah. just because you're at a sporting event. Hey, you. <laughs> Where? I feel like that's European soccer. <laughs> and if yeah. they did want to do that, I think they might look at you and go, all right, maybe not that one. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, maybe. But tall, like, tall I, guy privilege. <laughs> I feel like when those incidents happen, I hate I hate fights in the stands. Oh, it's annoying. Like, it makes me. There's been so many. Recently. It makes me physically uncomfortable because I'm afraid for these people's lives. Like if somebody bangs their head like that's so dangerous. And also it's fucking sports. You and don't need also, to get violent. They're See the always, lightning one? They're always yeah. out of shape. The, the <laughs> lightning one. They're always <laughs> fat guys. <laughs> like, like I'm going to Stephen A. Smith this. It's time to talk about these fat bastards. Okay. Uh, no, I, I like, <laughs> like, when do you That's ever the most see surreal video in two the world. guys that have ever trained one punch in their life? Oh, like, no. It's never that. And so these guys, they watch, like, they get up, they'll watch hockey or they watch football, they watch UFC, and they're like, I could do that too. <laughs> And then don't put any of it into practice. And then they get a couple Bud Lights deep at the stadium. Yeah. And they're like, let me, let me, you should catch these hands. And, and other old fat guys like, yeah. you know what? I'm thinking the same thing you're no, thinking. Do not watch uh, boxing or hockey or uh, UFC. Um, if you want to know how well you do in a fight, just watch like random strangers get into fights. Yeah. At a sporting event. Yeah. It's not for you. And uh, I guarantee it's not for you. Yeah, I saw, I think it was like a, a Cowboys fan and it was a couple weeks ago. It might have been, Jesse, did the Cowboys in Green Bay play like a few weeks ago? Jesse's got it up uh, on his computer. No, no, that's, that's, that's not the that's not the one. That's yeah. not the one. That's no, a no, different that's, one. That's, that was from last night. Just people arguing. There was, I was looking for the the lightning one. There was one for a couple weeks ago where a Cowboys fan got into, I think, with a Green Bay fan. And like the only thing I could think was it was right at the top of the concourse. And you know how they always have those like autographed pictures of like legends of the form of the team that are, you know, whatever. And they're all up on a on a cage. And and they were like running into this. I'm like that person who worked so hard to collect all of that merch and is trying to sell it at a silent auction, it, it probably for a charity, is just going to yeah. get fucked right now because of you two idiots. There was... Uh, I, don't, I don't know if Drew would want me telling the story. I'm going to do it anyway. He was at the uh, Avalanche Leafs game the other day and people were giving him a really hard time when the Avs were down 3-0. Mm -hmm. And obviously he, get, he got to give it back because... Oh boy, did he ever. Yeah, and he said there was a... <laughs> There was a drunk Leaf fan giving him a lot of trouble. Uh huh. And then a drunker Leafs fan came to his defense. <laughs> no. Yeah. And he was like throwing stuff at the guy. And Drew's like, why are you doing this? And, the, and the, he's like, I don't like bullies. <laughs> <laughs> I've been, oh, I, like I, that. I got tears in my eyes. I've been thinking about that story ever since he told it to me. It's so funny. I like that. And Adam, I don't he, like bullies. <laughs> The uh, the Cowboys and Packers didn't play they didn't? this season. It was so Cowboys and somebody. It was a different team. It's always the about. Cowboys. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and it's also Yan when Yankees fans come to town, we get the uh, we got a, a, a lot of fights. This, that's the one sporting event that happens in Toronto where you get a large majority of the opposing fans. Yes. Yankees fans love coming up here for like a four game set and like being at all the games. And it's packed with the Yankees fan every time uh, Rogers uh, Rogers Center. There's and you're also not just a lot of. Red Sox fans who live here. Mm -hmm. That yes. too. Red Ontario Sox. has a weird amount of not people who like like the Bruins or the Red Sox. They are Boston sports fans. Mm. It's really strange. Same with uh, Nova Scotia. A lot of that. Nova Scotia makes some more sense. Closer. Right there. Yeah. Whereas I think I don't, maybe I'm being weird thinking this. I think a lot of it has to do with Bobby Orr. Oh, absolutely. They're like, I like the Bruins. Okay. Now I also like the Celtics and I like the Red Sox. And yeah. Yep. yep. Yeah. Well, let's get to the Bet MGM big story, shall we? Yeah. Now, if you were to take a look at Maple Leafs social media, not the Toronto Maple Leafs account, but uh, Leaf fans, Leafs Twitter. How do you think? How how would you rate the excitement out of ten when they found out that Ilya Samsonov was going to start? 
Oh, I think it was somewhere around a balmy 1.4. How many people would have bet Ilya Samsonov making two amazing saves, not even letting in a goal till the 16th shot last night? Dude, the fans chanting, Sammy, 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 and his team letting him down within 20 seconds <laughs> was the perfect <laughs> illustration of what the Leafs are, man. I think it, uh, you know, it's funny. I, I think it was J.D. Bunkus that that tweeted, like, when he when he made his first save, people were cheering. Yeah. And I think J.D. thought it was like a Bronx cheer where they were being sarcastic about no. it. No. I don't think that they were. No, that crowd was behind him all night. That was, th like, just from a television viewer, that was one of the best crowds the Leafs have had all season. That's cool. I'm not surprised because uh -huh. it's a Sunday. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of quote unquote real fans were there. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. 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 The Sunday game uh, coming off the Saturday game is a game like a lot of the season ticket holders will give away or sell. You know, it's a lot of a yeah. lot of actual fans are in the building. Yep. Yeah. Oh, and the game's delayed. Yeah, I can't go. I got work mm -hmm. tomorrow here. Yep. I think, little, I think a lot cheaper, of tickets were given away. A little cheaper on a Sunday night with the Monday coming up, you know, work next day. So you can get it get in there on like the the secondary market. It makes a lot of sense. I was offered. There I, we go. I, I couldn't go. Regular yeah. guy Steve got ah, tickets. Ah, yeah. regular Steve. Yeah. No, I you know I was thinking that that uh, um, it was great for Sammy because this is a guy that needs confidence, and it shows that the skill is still there. The skill was always it's there. always it's, still been there. It's it's wild that he's had a clean bill of health basically this whole time. I know he got sick for a while there. Uh, like the with the flu, right? Everybody had the flu. Yeah, he made some saves. Yeah, and the, I mean, generally the team played okay in front of. Him. God, they gave up so many odd. Man We're not talking about that. This is the no? Bet MGM big story. My bad. Mm. Not the Bet MGM. Oh my God, the Leaf story. It's. We'll it's, get to that next. It's. Um. You know what? He's actually had some really good games this season, mm -hmm. and it was the team letting him down. Uh, in those games, some of his best games were losses. Uh, this season, and I don't think that's his fault. Hopefully, uh, he's at very least an NHL goaltender for the rest of the season. Now, that's the positive part, and that's why it's in the BetMGM big story. The rest of it is now. And the rest of it was not pleasant. No. It was not pleasant. So the Toronto Maple Leafs gave up a lead on home ice to a really good team. They got out to a great start, but, you know, the first period was the Leafs, and then they lost the second two periods. And then, and I'm just giving you a synopsis of the weekend, then we could go wherever you want. And then Sheldon Keefe comes out on the microphone and says that uh, William Nylander didn't have a good shift all night, and, and the players weren't good. And then he goes in, and he's like, I'm going to put my foot down. Easily Keefe's worst weekend as Leafs head coach. Max Easily. Domi is going to be the second line center. He did. Max Domi and that line had a great game against Colorado. There's no question. They were the sure. only one going. Although the fourth line wasn't bad. Um, how long did we think Max Domi between Bertuzzi and Nylander was going to last? Well, what, <laughs> someone we were talking to last night was like, ah, that's... Those those lines aren't even going to last for a period. Of course, um, in the uh, in the Detroit game and lasted all game. So Sheldon Keefe appears to be screaming from the rooftop. I hate this roster. <laughs> so yeah, and and, and it, the funny thing about it for me is, and I tweeted this. I said I stole a phrase from you. I, I said Sheldon Keefe got stuffed into a locker this weekend, and I actually Horrible. I think he stuffed himself into a locker, and I'll tell you why. It was two things, guys. First one is. You play a, a good first period against Colorado, although the first two lines aren't really going, and they need to be going. That McKinnon line is unbelievable. Well, and Colorado was terrible. They were. They were. They, well, so, they, they had a fourth line with two defensemen on it. But the first the first part that I want to say is that Keefe's solution to that, when he's seeing instability in his roster, is to further destabilize it by mixing it all up. And... And so by the end of the third period, he can't play like three of the guys. Tavares is not playing. Bertuzzi is not playing. Second. Nylander's not playing. Yeah, they played, what, four or five minutes? Bertuzzi max? played 122 of the third. Okay. So there's that. Mm -hmm. And Tavares was very similar until the very end when they had to throw out everybody to try and get a goal. And Gregor. And Noah Gregor mm -hmm. with under 30 seconds to go in a one-goal game. Yeah. Noah Gregor had a good game. And then he went offside. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then the second game, uh, he's like, I'm putting my foot down and 
The Mitch Marner and Tyler Bertuzzi are, I don't even know if, if they're on the second line or the third line, but they're going to be centered by Max Domi. It was very confusing. So, so it, was, you, it was scheduled as the third line. Scheduled as the third line. Yeah, okay. Mitch Marner was technically on the third line on Sunday. And and Matthews, Holmberg, Nylander. And I listen, I'm been, I've been really impressed with Holmberg. He's been the most impressive player lately, which is not good. But the thing that, that drives me nuts about Keefe is he'll do stuff like put Connor Timmons in the lineup. When William Lagason, uh, who has in, played solid, is right there, it's and, completely inexcusable. And I know it's, I know what it's going to sound like because we've had William Lagason on our network, D- dude. Connor Timmons is not there. He's not an NHL defenseman for this team. No, nope. At, and at one point well, one, at one point one, point to William Lagason and, and show me his bad game. He's been fine. That's what he needs to. In do. my he's eye, he's fine. had like one and a half, maybe. Like he's generally been pretty solid. Connor Timmons, every time he steps on the ice, and everybody can see it. It's an eye test thing. You can see it. Not there. You you know what he can do? Um, he can put up points and cause them. <laughs> and well, and is that what you need from your third pair? Do you need points? No. Absolutely. And him and Benoit together is a waste of time. What are you doing? And of all the people to be held accountable from the Colorado game, Brody? No Brody. Well, he's he's he stayed dying. on the top pair. He's dying out there. That he's guy's dying he's out there. absolutely flailing out there. That the sometimes um, even in the LFRs where I go off, I blow it a little. The um, uh, the TJ Brody, the 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 first, shorthanded situation where he doesn't touch the puck, lets it go by, and it leads immediately to a goal, and then another penalty. It didn't even register with me what he had done. Like, I'm looking at Jake McCabe, and I'm like, oh, he's just standing there. He looks totally unprepared for what's going on. Why? The the reason he was totally unprepared is Brody eluded the puck on purpose for reasons unbeknownst. Like, he just had a brain fart because I guess your instincts are the Leafs were already on the penalty kill. You want some of the penalty kill to elapse Mm -hmm. before going on the five on three dude it's at the beginning of it you're fucked just touch the puck accept your two minutes and and go and go and he (laughs) i've never seen that before no i like tj brody i've always liked him while he's been here but this year it has stood out there's something up there's uh, something up. If there's if a lost step, there's something. If it works out, like if he misses the, if he intentionally doesn't touch the puck and the puck goes in the corner, it kills a couple more times. Are we sitting here calling it a high IQ play? No. 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 It no I, didn't. I think we are. I don't think no. so. It didn't, though. The puck was not going to the corner, though. You know what I mean? If the puck went to the corner, it would have been the avalanche fucking it up. Mm-hmm. You know, like what's, is the plan there? All right, we're going to kill time by letting the avalanche have the puck and facing a bunch of shots. That's not a strategy. The, the idea is you want less time on the five on three. So if they're right, going to pass it around, you let them pass it around and kill that time. But on the five on three, well, I mean, the avalanche could also just fire the puck at your goalie and then your goalie has it and the play's dead. End. Yeah, that, that was the idea of him shoveling the puck to that TJ Brody. Mm-hmm. four seconds. I just, I, I don't think it's a strategy. I don't think he meant to do it, to be honest. Yeah, I think there no, was... he clearly meant to do it. Like, I don't think he thought it through, is mm-hmm. what I mean. He obviously did it intentionally. Yeah. I know what you're saying, but I don't think any of us would be like, damn right, TJ, kill those five seconds. I've also been holding back on on TJ because I feel like I I give him some grace because he's been the, the guy that's been the most steady. Like in terms of defense, like he's yeah. been for for years. Yeah, yeah. But this year's not. I, did, been I hated his playoff. Yeah, I hated his playoff. Yeah, that uh, McKay Brody pairing should have worked. Didn't. Um, I I liked my idea. Lilligren's been playing great. Put him with Riley. Um, and they th- have. They have. Yeah, he's sometimes. Um, then I would do. Oh man, what was it, McCabe? I think you keep McKay Benoit together Mm -hmm. and I would have done Lagason Brody is what I would have done because Giordano was terrible. So he had to sit. um, And I just like Lagason more than Timmons. I honestly think we're going after the wrong defenseman. I think the guy who deserves the most criticism out of that Colorado game was Mark Giordano. 
who was an abomination he was, he, from start to finish. Well, that's he was why bad he in the start. Islanders game, too. Yeah, and he hasn't been good in weeks. Like, since he's come back from injury, I don't think Mark Giordano has had a good game. And that's and this, so that my question then is, okay, so you're going to sit him. Great. Mm-hmm. Connor Timmons? <sighs> that, and that's where it goes back to my original thing of Keith stuffing himself into a locker. And I, from what we've heard, rumors... Like that play the Leafs, obviously no player likes being called out publicly. I would expect that's the reason that they do it. I don't feel like that they, they enjoyed that. And to be honest with you, I'm usually on the coach's side on this, on this one, but I feel like it's like Sheldon, you're, this is you, this is you, man. You, you are the one who mixed up the lines with 20, with 40 minutes to go in the game. These lines that have been together and almost concrete since game one, the Detroit game. Uh, if Gio's the, bad, play the other five guys. Dude, do that. Two minutes left in the game. Less than two minutes left in the game. You have a Frank and fourth line of Camp Gregor, Nice. That's unjustifiable. Who told you to do that? And Nice, who's not been not at his best, frankly. Not no, best. no. But what the? F- what is that line? What is the purpose of that line? Is it a shutdown line? I think that's how he sees it. Absolutely the fuck. Gregor is getting caved. I think this team healthy probably doesn't have him in it. I think this team come playoff time probably ought to not have him in the lineup, to be honest. Uh, that's a Franken line. You have a shutdown center who hasn't done much shutting down this season. Mm-hmm. You have Canadian Kapanen and you have... Matthew Nyes, who doesn't belong in that role. What is that line? And, and and frankly, looked lost. Like he didn't know where to go, where to be. Well, obviously, and, and it's not his. I don't blame. I blame him. I blame the coach. And and back to he's the, a rookie. I I think had there not been an apparent injury to Bobby McMahon, Nyes might have been scratched. Okay, I think that might have been the plan. So so then, but but that's not. Again, deployment is is the issue. Jesse Jesse said it perfectly. Giordano was bad against that. The Avalanche, he was bad against the Islanders. Like, okay, you pull him out of the lineup. Mm-hmm. You need to be able to, like, it's like, it's like Sheldon Keefe's like, let me just throw it at the wall. Like, I, you can't sit there and tell me He's that these brilliant He's hockey minds guessing. who make three plus million bucks a year, and that's what Sheldon's rumored salary is, is over $3 million a year. You can't tell me that they thought that was going to work. You can't tell me. What you was going to work? The lineup change? The, the Benoit Timmons. You can't tell me that any rational brain thought that was going to work if you put any thought into it. And that's... So we we rag on the lease for too many men calls because they don't hustle to the net. Uh, uh, lack of attention to detail. That is coaching detail. That's the kind of shit where you're like, am I setting this player up for success? And he's not. Oh, the, and I'm not, by the way, on the Fire Keith bandwagon. I am in the Brad Trilliman needs to go down there and and wake him up. Well, so I, I had a tweet yesterday. I don't think Sheldon Keith makes those lineup changes without the blessing of management. Mm-hmm. Um, oh. I think it's it's a copycat league, and there's a bunch of teams that are fed up with their players, and they are intentionally uh, hiring coaches, or at least telling their coaches to be a pain in the ass. Uh, to their players, or you simply hire a guy like John Tortorella, who you don't need to give that mandate to. He just does it. Mm-hmm. Sheldon Keefe has never been this coach, ever, uh, under the Leafs and their coddle. He wasn't allowed to be. And let's start, like, you know what's he funny? He wasn't. Did right? you notice, did, did you see the story the other day? Um, I think it was, was it Bobby Brink who... Uh, uh, he was in the Flyers lineup and then Tortorella took him out when he was in his hometown. And Torts was asked about it and he's like, yeah, it's, I feel bad for him, but it's the National Hockey League. Mm-hmm. You know, I hope his family can see him play one day, but it's it's not going to be tonight. It's the National Hockey League. And no one gave Torts any shit. No one gave him any shit for it. Meanwhile, you know, uh, when... Keith joined. He had to basically be the happy-go-lucky camp counselor, uh, you know, letting well, everyone. Well, that's because play they the- had a guy who was borderline, yes, like no empathy ever. But doesn't now deal with doesn't doesn't speak human being. Yes, but that was 2019. It's now 2024, which is weird to say. And they're, you know, Keith, who is not brand new anymore, has been here a long time. 
I think some of the players are getting friggin' sick of them. And I think management is like, cool, well, the coach isn't going anywhere. So here's his carte blanche to be a bit of a dick, a bit of a tyrant right now. But honestly, it costs the Leafs the game. There's no excuse to lose that fucking game. The Detroit Red Wings were in an airport all day. All day. And I know people were talking about it like, okay, that's not the biggest struggle in the world. They're going up against a team that it, that has home ice advantage, that has been wee, 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 wee. Like, I put the pillow on the wrong side. Mm. Wee, 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 wee. They've been sleeping peacefully, having their, their pregame meals and pregame their naps. naps. And they're, they're, you're, you're having a bag of peanuts at a fucking airport, not knowing when your plane is taking off, if it's taking off, if you're even playing that night. Like, how easily must that game have been, or how easy must that game have been to prepare for mentally and physically for the Detroit Red Wings. You know, like, uh, you know, uh, apparently Patrick Kane, w- when he got injured, first of all, so much of the offense runs through Patrick Kane. He got injured in the first period and you still lost. Second of all, that dude just had hip surgery. And like how much of being in the airport all day had to do with him getting hurt? Oh, I, I wonder. I don't that. know. Like, a, it, Fried said it wasn't the hip. Thank goodness for him. Yeah. Uh, but, like, you, there's no reason to lose that game. Like, e- and even putting Timmons in, I'm like, well, this this is the sort of game where he feasts against teams that are bottom half mm-hmm. uh, or <coughs> should be giving up a bunch of goals. Detroit was at a severe disadvantage with James Reimer in net. Uh, those are two separate thoughts. They were at a severe different uh, disadvantage, disadvantage comma, and, James, and Reimer. James Reimer was in net who went into that game with a sub 890. Like those are the games where you can expect him to feast a little, pick up an assist or two. They, there's no reason to lose that friggin' game. Yeah, I feel like the beginning of the conversation, <coughs> Adam, I think you're taking too much onus off of the players. Like okay. I'm not okay. I don't I don't think I co-sign like this is this is on Sheldon Key for mixing up the blender because as Steve outlined, I don't care where you're playing in that lineup, that game was set up for you to win. There's there's and if you're upset about the coach switching up the lineup, just fucking pull up your pants as the National Hockey League. And Who cares? A lot of people don't want to hear this. Nylander? Stunk. He's, he's stunk. No, for, no. I th- stunk I th- for three games. No, I thought Nylander had a, a good two periods on Sunday. He oh. hit he hit a, a post early on in the power play. Yeah. He had another one that went off of... A, it, was a, it was a good save he's by working. Reimer. Yeah, I thought he's he was working. great in the offensive zone on Sunday. Yeah, well, 11.5. <laughs> I, t- I told you, everyone loves you for cheap. Um, you know, anecdotally, I was hearing about people ripping them in the stands. Like, you make 11.5 now. This was the Colorado game. Mm-hmm. Um, everyone loves you for less than seven. 11.5. You're the, like, I was saying this in the LFR video. You're the second highest paid winger on planet Earth. I don't convert. You have to convert. Mm-hmm. If Nylander suck, or sorry, if McDavid sucks, and even if he's trying his gosh darndest, and he doesn't, if McDavid doesn't get a point for three straight games, how many of those games do the Oilers win? Zero. Z- zero. <laughs> no. One. Are oh. they lucky to split the points, pick up three out of six? Or even even better, even better. Because people will be like, well, what about Drysidle? Yeah, no. What if McDavid and Drysidle have an off night together? Three games. You're three. fucked. Now that's a little bit more like the Leaf situation. You're because it, you had. I mean, the Austin Matthews giveaway against Colorado was so out of character and atrocious. That and, was brutal. And the Keith, the <laughs> it's funny. Keith, I think had a point after Colorado mm-hmm. in terms of challenging his players by talking about McKinnon, McCarr, and Taves mm-hmm. being in a different tier. I think it was poorly executed, though, because absolutely no Leaf fan wants to hear that. Matthews is going to make more than Nathan McKinnon next year. Um, Next year, the Leafs will have four players, four, who make more than Kale McCarr. And they will have five who make more than Devon Taves. 
So, like, who are you calling out there? Are you calling out your stars so that they can be better? Are you calling out your GM for doing a shitty fucking job? Because if those guys are in another tier, they're in another tier, man. They're in another league. Then your GM signed your guys for too much fucking money. Yeah, and he's right. Like, I don't think no rational Leafs fan can sit there and say that McKinnon, McCarr, and and uh, and Ranton aren't in a different league than everybody on the Leafs. Like, Matthew, he's such a special player. He's such a special player. He's such a special player. Nathan McKinnon, sport. I agree. No, no, Ma- no, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Matthews is such a special player, and the way he scores goals seems to be so effortless. Is he a more dominant player than Nathan McKinnon? No, no. It's easy to think that until you watch them play each other and you realize, yes, there are indeed tears to this. It's not fucking close. Mm-hmm. It's to me, it's McKinnon McDavid one, two. Um, and I mean, points wise, McDavid eats McKinnon alive, but uh, pin them against each other. I think it's closer than you think. And it's Nathan not McKinnon is a friggin animal. It's not a knock on Matthews. It's actually a compliment to be putting him in this conversation. You know, yes. the fact that he's even close to those two gentlemen is is a is a compliment to Matthews. It's just he's a little smidge below the two best players in the world. And it's very evident when you see them go up against each other. Mm-hmm. As as producer Drew loved to say all Saturday, they're a one line team, and their one line is so dominant that they're an incredible overall team. And the Leafs did not have so this goes back to I think Sheldon Keefe is screaming and pleading with management, get me a shutdown friggin' line, because Colorado has one line. One. And the Leafs couldn't do shit about it. Five unanswered goals. And yet they let Four Cogliano and Cop score on them this weekend. Cops had, Cops had a garbage season. And when he wants to show up as the this weekend, just for Detroit, all of a sudden, he's unreal again. Like, it's it's uh, this reminds me of the Babcock situation with Sheldon Keefe pleading to management. Mm-hmm. Isn't that what Babcock did for the last, like, six months of his tenure? Just, hey, get me, not even six months, the first, all of these years in Toronto, get me some players that I want to play. There, and now Sheldon keeps sitting here doing the same thing. I I think Babcock was a genuine nightmare of a human being to work with, with the Toronto Maple Leafs. But there was one move that he was correct about. Trading Per Lindholm for Nick Patan. And a lot of Leaf fans aren't going to want to hear that. So... Lindholm was, okay, there's my penalty killing center. And the Leafs took him away. And I think they wanted Babcock to do a certain thing or certain things. And then they just proceeded to not have a natural center on the penalty kill for like two years. Yeah. And so he started Hyman versus Bergeron. Yeah. Yeah. But Babcock would embarrass Kyle Dubas by not doing what he Kyle Dubas wanted he, because he, he wanted different guys. He <laughs> took it too far by like borderline intentionally putting players in a position to fail. Yes. Um, Like literally working in spite of his general man or to spite his general manager. Um, But like he was right in that case. Like, dude, I need this person. So I see Sheldon Keefe just grasping at anything and mixing up the lines on a Sunday afternoon. And I'm like, is he throwing up his hands asking Bradshaw Living to do something with the trade deadline coming up? Well, and also he, Keefe has so many uh, special lines that he puts together in certain situations. Why then with less than two minutes to go, are you throwing out this mishmash bullshit of Gregor camp nice when you could easily here off the top of our heads, let's make a shutdown line yarn croak camp Bertuzzi. I don't know. How's that? How's how's uh yarn croak camp. I think we definitely start there. And who else do you throw out there? Probably Bertuzzi. Marner! Marner! Marner, Jesus Marner's Christ, good Marner! Defensively. How did I miss that? Sure. So you have, uh, who was the other guy I mentioned? Yarn Croak. Throw him on the left. Marner on the right. Cam for the middle. There's your shutdown line. They've never done that. That wasn't so hard. Nope. Can't do it. We're going to throw out. You shouldn't throw out your fourth line. There's no situation. There's no justification. There's no reason to do that. So I don't know. Maybe this is his fuck it. I'm just throwing it out there. Is the reason to do that? He hates all the other guys on the team (laughs) at that moment. Like he's sitting there behind the bench. It's three minutes to go in the third period. He says, no one else has showed up. I hate all you guys. I'm putting out the fourth line. Right. But but then then who's he embarrassing? 
He's not embarrassing the guys. He's embarrassing himself, right? You, He's the you, one that looks like an idiot. It it just it. Listen, I don't think the players played very well, but it feels like the coaching staff lit two points on fire. At very least, they both games should have gone overtime. Yeah, well, Colorado for sure. You have a three nothing lead. We were tied. And Detroit, was, three minutes left with that was right. Awful. And it, yeah, you should have gone oh, two two points just there. Even if you lost both games. You, Honestly, they you let four points on. They should have won the Colorado yes. game, and then, then they there, won both. there's no excuse for losing the Detroit game with everything that went involved behind and the Sam, scenes like, of the Detroit game. And Sammy playing well. And Sammy he gave you well. a chance to win gave besides his effort on a poke check. Like yes. I know, yeah. Yeah. I know, oh no one wants to. Yeah, that was bad. Yeah, I, I <laughs> know. Listen, we're happy with that. If it's just one, just one, we can take it. He gave you a chance to win <laughs> exactly with Samsonov and how he plays. Uh, you, okay. And and this is where this is where I bring it back to, and this is I maybe you maybe it is the players, maybe it is the coach. It's probably both. It's both. But I do have I do have an issue with that. That's Sheldon Keefe, attention to detail, sir. This is the roster that you have. You want to prove a point, go upstairs and knock on the door. But if you're going out there and you're intentionally throwing players, a la Connor Timmons, Matthew Nyes, Noah Gregor, into positions, David Kampf into positions where they cannot succeed, then you are basically doing exactly what bad coaches do. I, I, the greatest coaches take what they have and they squeeze blood from a stone. Tortorella, who I am very critical of, but is he, listen, Torts does his thing. That is a blood from the stone coach. This, but his Flyers tenure is following the exact pattern. Basically every Tortorella tenure has. Absolutely. The Lightning, the Rangers, the Blue Jacks, except for Vancouver. Yeah, we're counting down except the days until they get sick of them. Yes. Like, yeah, yeah a couple doing. more years. He's got like two more years. Now, listen, Frank Corrado did have like a level headed logical take on this. So I'll offer the alternative as well. He said, to keep things in perspective in Toronto, in their last 10 games, the New York Rangers, first in the Metro, are 4-5-1. and one. Vegas, who is second in the Pacific, are 3-7-0. and oh. The Kings, who are third in the Pacific, are 2-4-4. Four and four. The Leafs, who are third in the Atlantic, are 4-4-2. Four, four and two. The Stanley Cup isn't awarded in January. Mm -hmm. he's, and he's did he, did he have the Vegas Golden Knights in there? Yes, he did. Oh, okay, okay. He's right, he, and guess what? I'm thrilled about it. He is, I'm so excited. No, wait, wait, I'm wait. I'm so fucking pumped. He's he's right. What did the deserve to win a meter say? He's well, well the deserve to win a meter had Colorado winning that game. Of course it did. But uh, <laughs> the having a three nothing lead, like he's right. Big picture, microscope. You have a three nothing lead on home ice. Win. You have a team that spent all day at the airport and the lead over them and their top, one of their top offensive players is hurt. And therefore they're playing shorthanded. That's a win. Mm -hmm. You win those games. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's a hot take. For God's sake, get two out of four points. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Zero. Teams don't walk away with zero. You stink. Yeah. Yes. And I, and that, I listen, I, I love when people say, ah, calm down, calm down. It's just a blah, blah, blah. No. <laughs> Fucking wrong no, man. Wrong show. I would, yeah. <laughs> wrong show. <laughs> this show isn't for you. <laughs> yeah. This show Try another for, one. We, we, There's others. I, we represent the fans uh, because we are the fans that, uh, we don't represent them, but we, we are fans that live and die. The Chris Johnston show is also recording an episode and they're today, probably and saying, they won't yell as much. They're probably telling you to calm the hell down. And that's probably. rational. I don't fucking want to be rational because I would like to dive in on the things that happened this weekend that didn't need. It's rational to expect your team to win a game where they have a three to the lead. Now let's, let's talk a little pettiness for a second here. Sure. Okay. When the Penguins rolled through town, uh, the big story is obviously Kyle Dubas, right? Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, last night, the big story was Justin Hall. <sighs> and one of them got a video tribute. One of them did not. And the one that got the tribute was Justin Hall. Now, the Leafs will get away with that by saying, well, we only do video tributes for players. Yeah. 
But what would the video tribute for Dubas be? Yeah, what are we doing here? Why would we give well, would Kyle Dubas like, a video? For your, no, for your time, Kyle Dubas. Here's, I think there's some pettiness here. Guys. Here's here's that video of Dubas saying "fuck me." Here, <laughs> yeah, here's him yelling at Lightning fans. Here's here's that video of him screaming at Shanahan when Babcock uh, started the wrong line in overtime. Here's that video of him getting into a fight with Lightning fans. The video of him throwing a water bottle. Yeah, like what what is this fucking tribute? You lost to Montreal. You lost to Tampa like I don't I'm not giving you a trade hey, here's him and Jason Spezza wearing a pea coat like you beat like, Tampa. no yeah get out of here I, your I, boring I, ass office at performance center for performance center that is you're unforgivable ugly. you want to put it the ugly ass office up on the screen put here's you telling up. Brendan Shanahan <laughs> that Jimmy VC has been claimed off waivers yeah here's <laughs> you talking with Sheldon Keefe about what goalie is playable playing at the moment and paying a first and two fourths for Nick Felino. yeah here's yeah here's that super <laughs> awkward conversation about one of the worst trades of your tenure here's <laughs> yeah which by the way was a good trade when it happened I still felt like it was I'll good. die on the hill that that was the right trade at the bad. time yeah at the time I'll yeah. die on that hill just I just I just want to say that I Back think, blew up. I think there's I just thought and I don't I, I never hated Justin Hall. I just couldn't stand watching him play certain <laughs> spots. The guy, Justin the guy, is apparently a great guy and a great teammate. And by the way, he's probably the best dude. How's their penalty kill been without him? My issue not is always good. not good. My issue is always why is he a top four guy? He's not a top four guy. No. Why are we deploying him as a top four guy? If he was playing bottom six minutes, I wouldn't have said a word. There's a video of him leading the Red Wings down the tunnel and he's doing like a dance and like the vibes are immaculate. Dude, he's an incredible vibes guy. Oh, absolutely. He's a great teammate. Like, you know, you know, part of it, uh, part of the Leaf struggles this season, we've been talking about uh, Marner and Marner seems off. Mm -hmm. Justin Hall leaving, I think, is a big part of that. Like those guys go on vacation together in talking to the Leafs, um, talking about the biggest bromance on the team a few years ago. I remember expecting everyone to say Willie and Rasmus Sandin. A lot of them, more than half maybe, said uh, Marner and Justin Hall. And Muzzin and mm -hmm. Hall too were pretty tight as well. They were pretty yep. tight. Yeah. Hall is a get along. He gets along with everybody. Yes. I still remember him doing like funny Fortnite dances uh, at the Leafs uh, Sick Kids event. Mm hmm. And like he's just having the best time and he's joking around. That was the season he was healthy scratch 71 times. Yeah. He's yeah. a wicked guy. He's and Justin Hall guy. has been in the Toronto Maple Leafs organization since 2015, 2016. That's when he first started playing for the Marlies. As an ECHL player. Like that's a yeah. long time to be in one place in your entire career. He deserved a tribute video. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I am becoming uh, a bit boomerish about the tribute videos. I am becoming a bit boomerish about the tribute videos. I think we can stop, but the, at what, what point? <laughs> what point are we drawing the line on the tribute videos? We don't need to do this. It, uh, saying thank you to a player who was in your organization for what was that eight years? Call him, say thanks. Saying thank, I think he deserves a public thank you in the arena I, that the fans can I'm, applaud I'm, him. I'm done with the eight I, seasons. You know what? It's it's got to the point. And this is not just Justin Hall. There's a whole bunch of other ones that other teams are doing, whatever, where it feels insincere. Like there's literal memes about it that other teams are like, hey, thanks so much when somebody gets traded through, like in a three-way trade. The Cutter Goche tribute is going to be crazy. <laughs> oh, there'll be a tribute. Oh, there. there'll yeah. be a tribute. Yeah. Tribute Hi. with batteries. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're, they're guaranteed there is a game delay. <laughs> well, you his think, first appearance in Philly. You think the Tavares Islanders thing yeah. is bad? It'll be uh, 10 times worse. Can oh, yeah. I put money on that? Will there be a delay <laughs> due to things thrown on the ice? We'll have to talk to Ben MGM and see if they can time, let you do I that. I will. I, I, I'm going to turn into five dollars, Steve. Yeah, <laughs> for that. Adam. Justin Hall worked in an organization for eight seasons. He was a great person. I'm sure there's still lots of people in MLSE who love the dude. I, I he deserved at, a public thank you. I was at Rogers for five and a half years, Jesse. On yeah. my fifth anniversary, they yeah. gave me a plaque that, that said thank you mm -hmm. and a one hundred dollar gift card to Rogers. Yes, and don't you wish an organization <laughs> uh, was better than that? <laughs> Sorry, $125 gift card. And don't you wish they were better than that? Uh, I, I felt Here like, is a corporation who is acting better than I that, felt, even I though felt, Rogers know, owns part of it. I didn't want to tribute, to be fair, but yes, yes, <sighs> yes, but I'm like, I, it, get, it gets to the point, I'm like, uh, I don't know. It, does the specialness go away? I don't know. <sighs> Maybe I'm wrong. Like, if, like, let's say, let's say Dave Dave Comp plays three out of four years of this contract with the Leafs, and he goes somewhere else. He plays over 200 games with the Leafs. If oh. is David Comp gonna get one? 
You know who? Uh, you know? You know we never had this conversation once until there was a moment where we started having this conversation and tribute videos were ruined forever. Do you know that moment? No. I'll tell you the moment. Tell me the moment. Producer Drew probably knows the moment. Darcy Tucker got a tribute video after getting bought out by the Leafs. Mm -hmm. He returns to town with the Colorado Avalanche. They play a video tribute to him. In the commercial break, the TV timeout. Why was there a TV timeout? Because the Leafs had just taken a penalty and the Avalanche were heading to the power play. And who scored on the power play right after the video Darcy tribute? Darcy Tucker. Darcy friggin' Tucker. Ah. And from that moment on, I still, you could probably look it up. There were blogs, there were newspaper posts, there, there was everything. People were like, you know what? Enough of the video tributes mm. because Darcy Tucker ruined it. Well, I don't, I, I, uh, I feel like Darcy Tucker deserved it. No, Adam. Darcy didn't. Tucker. Oh, how Darcy many, Tucker how many games did he play for the team? Uh, okay. He, how did he perform in the playoffs? Uh, you know what? <laughs> You know what? You guys know what I'm talking about. And neither no! of you let me have this. I think Justin all deserved a video tribute. Okay. All right. All right. Well, I'm personally looking forward to the Martin Jones video tribute in a few years. I'm really pumped. I Can't also wait. am. We should have had a Curtis McElhaney one. Garrett Sparks. Is Kerfa going to get one? Oh, man. Yes. He has to. If Justin Hall gets one, Alex Kerfa gets one. He scored one of the... Like, like, I'm trying to, after Tavares's series winning goal. Yeah. Of all the overtime winners, the Matthews era Leafs have scored in the playoffs. Was there a better one than Kerfoot's? I think my favorite one was Bozak against the Capitals. Bozak against the Capitals was awesome. In game three, when they went up two to one, we're like, they might actually win this. And they didn't. Kapanen slaps it home. Yeah. was a good one. Slapping in. Slapping in. But. Dude, they erased a four-one deficit in the game yeah. where Kerfoot won it. Yeah, well, that was the that was the uh, uh, Columbus series, right? No. no, it was this year. Oh, it was this year? No, you're thinking of uh, the Matthews OT winner, right? And that no one remembers or gives a shit about because a no one was in the building. B uh, the Leafs lost lost the series. I'm pretty sure the next day. Yeah, that would two days later. <laughs> or two days. I only know that because my wife and I's first date was the comeback game. And then we decided, let's get together for the for game five. And they mm. sucked. Yep. Uh, yeah. February 29th, uh, the Arizona Coyotes visit the Toronto Maple Leafs. Alexander Kofit will be in the lineup. Will he receive a tribute video? Yes. There you go. Yes, he will. Uh, uh, there is mutual interest. And we've talked about this Friday. And they talked about it all weekend. Corey Perry in Toronto. Is there? Mutual. Well, Carlo, Carlo said it, and then a few like it's been chatted about on uh, Carlo Koliakova. That is, I should say his name properly. Uh, and then, of course, on on uh, on Sportsnet all weekend because both games were you know Hockey Night Canada and Sportsnet last night. They were talking about Corey Perry fitting into this lineup. Oh, where does he fit? Listen, man, if we're seeing Noah Gregor out there with two minutes to go, Corey Perry fits in the Leafs lineup. Uh, yeah. And well, and also. And people are like, what are they going to, where are they going to find the cap? I don't know. Wave someone. I honestly don't think it's going to happen. You don't? I think, I think there's too many other spots in the league he would go to. I don't think it's a, I don't know if there's any like truth to the rumor. If he ends up in Florida, I'm going to be so, I think that would make a little right. more sense. It's just, it's perfect. Just make the jersey, just stitch it. Like to me, he's going to the Panthers. He, I could see him going to the Lightning, mm -hmm. like to have that reunion. Mm hmm. But he lost a bunch of money when the Blackhawks tore up his contract. I think he's going to go to a no tax state or whatever, whatever it is. And he's going to sign with the Panthers who are a great fit or the lightning who are a great fit. Mm -hmm. I hope that the Panthers and Bruins have to play in the first round again. Just hear <laughs> the shit. Bad versus it's bad. most likely going to be Leafs, uh, Leafs, Toronto, or Leafs, Florida, you know, oh, first, first round series. Yeah. The most likely ones are Leafs, Panthers, or if the Panthers overtake the Bruins, Leafs, Bruins. Bruins yeah. <laughs> because of the friggin' division <laughs> setup. I hate me. it. Yeah. Like, um, <laughs> like we got to go back to one eight seating. Oh my God. I'm dying over here. Yeah. I'm so tired of watching these same teams. But no, I, every year you churn out the same matchups. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, it gets boring. Yeah, it gets it's a little it's it, a little overdone. You know what's crazy is when we did one to eight, there were still rivalries. Yeah, no. 
No, Gary Bettman will tell you only rivalries only exist if you play your division every playoff. Actually, he created the word rivalry. He yeah. coined it, he and he got the it. Oxford English Dictionary folks to be like, this is a word. Yeah. And Gary, thanks, Gary. With the Corey Perry thing, I think there's a lot of... Hey, that's Hockey Hall of Famer, Gary. Oh, you're sorry. <laughs> sorry, I got to put some respect on that name. With the Corey Perry thing, I think there's a lot of you link a guy to Toronto that generates conversation. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. If, if the Blue Jays have taught us anything, if you want your... Uh, if you want to raise... You merely mention the name <laughs> of the city of Toronto. Do you remember when leverage? Do you remember when Patrick Kane was training training in the Toronto area, and then there was rumors of the Leafs signing Patrick Kane, even though the Leafs were over in Sweden playing games, and nobody uh, who could meet with him would have been anywhere near Patrick Kane, and they're oh. like, "Oh, he had a Zoom check in," no. and then that turned out to be, "Hey, he's going to Detroit." Mm -hmm. No. So. Mm -hmm. uh, it, uh, um, God, it's. If we, before we move off of the Leafs, okay. one thing in particular that's weird about their record, they are really struggling at home, uh, and they've been absolutely fantastic on the road. Let me just actually That's tough up. when you charge what you charge for for, for home tickets. <laughs> uh, their road their road record is 11-3 and 6 and their home record is now 10-9 and 2. Is there anything there? Is there a there there with the road and home splits with the Uh Leafs? yeah, their mid is is what's there. Uh, mm -hmm. because like if if we listen by Bettman rules, their road record is fantastic. There are only three games this season out of twenty where the Leafs haven't gotten a point. They have two more wins than losses. At home, they have one more loss than win. They're above Bettman five hundred for both, but they're just they're mid, dude. They're mid. Uh, their goal differential is, eh, it's fine. It's positive plus 14. Look at Florida. 26. I mean, listen, wins. listen, listen. Look at Boston. Part, 27. Steve, Steve, part of that. 25 Sam, wins. You know it. Let's be, let's be real about it. Let's be real oh, about it. Oh, part of it's this. Part now, of it's that. Part of it's that. Part of it's this. Oh, come on. You know that. No, 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 you, you can't just win. throw that off. Win some games. Win the games you should. Okay. Stop blowing 3-1 leads to Chicago. Stop blowing 3-1 leads to the Islanders. Stop blowing 3-0 leads to the Avalanche. Stop losing games to teams that were at the airport all day. Stop losing uh, games against the Sabres. Stop losing games against the Sens. Stop losing games against the Blue Jackets. Stop being ass. Well, listen. Stop making Lucas Dostal look <laughs> like George fucking Vesna. Holy shit, guys! What you mean, fifty shots to the uh, to the to the logo? Nothing's gonna go in. Oh my uh, god! I, I uh, Jesse, now that we have that up there, and Maddie, keep it up. Keep the uh, keep the things. Up. Jesse, can you scroll down to the Pacific Division, please? Mm -hmm. Um, if you could, um, do you see where it says L ten? See Vancouver Canucks seven two and one. You see Vegas Golden Knights three. Is that right? Vegas Golden Knights three seven and oh my god! Mm -hmm. You see L A Kings two four four, and then you see the Look at that. A clean 10 0 and 0 from your Ed Edmonton mother freaking Oilers. And by the way, Holy in shit, Seattle. In uh in in um uh if you look at it from the wild card perspective, and this is the craziest part to me, um, they are just in a playoff spot hmm. after winning 10 games in a row. Uh here, wait, 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 wait. So the Oilers, who the Leafs play next, Great. are 10 0 and 0. Awesome. The Flames, who have not had a good season, uh, who the Leafs also play this week, have won three straight and they are six and four in their last 10. Then the Leafs play Vancouver, who are 7 2 and 1. And what's their win streak? Uh, it is at five. And then the <laughs> next night, oh boy. the Leafs play the Seattle Kraken. Who are nine zero and one winners of nine straight? Welp, should have won the game where he had a three nothing lead. Mm -hmm. What are you gonna say? Welp, should have beat the team that was fucking traveling all day. What are you gonna say when they go four and zero? Fucking Leafs. Great. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. I also think uh, it's funny the. Uh, uh, they did the strength of schedule thing on the athletic, and the Leafs have one of the hardest yeah. remaining schedules. Well, the hardest, the, the hardest, yardest. yeah, oh, great, the hardest remaining schedule for the rest of the season. Yeah. Toronto well, Leafs. maybe don't be bullshit against teams you should beat. Maybe don't be. They have to be the only team in the NHL to have a zero percent win percentage against Chicago this season. 
They have to be. How many wins does Chicago have? Uh, this year they have twelve uh, wins and twenty nine. The Leafs are the Leafs who are not in the same conference as the Blackhawks account for one sixth of Blackhawks victories. You suck ass. Stop. <laughs> I'm just. Oh well, you know the Le- It's not time to panic. It's not time to the Stanley Cup. It's, is this your first time? I. You ever notice this happens every year? What people which, tell me to calm down, and none of my fears end up being irrational at all. <laughs> every single year, I'm bang the fuck on. Blow it up! Oh wait, you can't. You're handcuffed to these guys fucking forever. All right, well, catch you next game when they hopefully yeah, that, are relevant. That blow up thing doesn't really work uh, for next season when everybody's signed. Yeah, the next yeah. year after though. There's a the actual real possibility. Oh, good. Yep. So you got to just sit one more year, one more year and a half, Steven. Oh, good. We'll get there. Yeah. Good. Like, guys, what are we doing? What are we doing? Yeah. Yeah. I think. Stop. I think, I think Stop. What we need to do here is understand what this team is. Man. I think the key here is what are they going to do about it? We know. We kind of know what the team is. It get, They're streaky good. And then they're streaky really bad. All right. Well, so what is management? Because the, 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 the whole conversation is, well, Treliving really hasn't got his hands in there yet. What is what is the trade deadline look like? Because we could start talking about that. He said they said there's rumors that he, they're not buying for sure. They're Release? holding. Up, yeah, he, they want to hold on to the draft picks because they've sent too many draft picks out the last few years. That's so fair. their idea here is to not sell on anything oh. and and uh, make trades off of the roster if they're going to make any trades. Well, then then you use prospects. No, they're like they're not selling anything that's future. So no, oh, like I'm um, no, uh, no. Yeah, no, they're they're not um, no Easton Cowan, no Fraser uh, Minton, no draft picks. They're not moving any of those out. Okay, well then yeah. you use your abundance of cap space to mm-hmm. your advantage. Yeah, but the idea is this team hasn't earned the right to buy. Yeah, like, no, I agree I, with you. Yeah, Sorry, I well, don't feel like this is a sarcasm response situation. No, I no, think no, they're what, doing what you want them to do, which is not rewarding no. failure. Well, they're not rewarding <laughs> failure, but also it, Jesse, even if they wanted to. You, I think they really this is can. them uh, getting. I think this is them coming to the right answer by default. Mm-hmm. Oh, we're not going to trade any draft picks. Good, you don't fucking have any. Oh, we're not going to trade any prospects. Good, you don't fucking have any. Well, you know, we're not going to eat away at our cap space. Good, you don't fucking have any. No, there, what like, are you supposed to do? No, you you can you, you could, have no flexibility. You would you, you would, have no leverage. If the Leafs were in a real, if the Leafs were sitting number one in the standings, you would make a good case that they could move sure. future pieces. And you if know? I had wheels, I'd be a wagon. No, but I'm saying like they are actually making a decision on the oh. roster because if they were in a position to win and sell, they could sell some of these future parts. It's, it's yep, not yep. like you can't act like they don't have draft picks. They legitimately have draft picks they have a first and round prospects. Pick. They have a first round pick that they could sell, but they're choosing not to. Well, right. Good. Yes. Good. For I feel like there's a good thing. That is, so yeah. so and what you were they telling don't me have a first is round we, pick next year. We are. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah. We are almost exactly. All these years later, at exactly where the Leafs were midway through the 1920 season. 1920? Like, yeah. You, you, not you, 1920. Like 1920. Not Babe Die. No, pre pandemic. Pre pandemic. I thought you meant like the last time they won something. No. Yeah, no. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> um, no, we have a coach who's flailing and just trying shit. <laughs> we have a management group that's like, you know what? This team is actually kind of mid and we're not going to invest in them. They have a bad cap situation and their stars take up too much of the situation. What has changed in <laughs> half a decade? Not much. Oh, they want a playoff series. Oh, let's hang that fucking banner. And then what happened? They got steamrolled. They got steamrolled. Like I, <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, I just, it's just, it's Groundhog Day. I get gaslit every year mm-hmm. that things are fine mm-hmm. and they're not. And we watch the games and we have some fun along the way. Sure, we do. And then they get fucking killed. There, here's the other thing that's similar to the 1920 season. It is not a given that they're going to make the playoffs. That was a really important to like, forget the airport stuff. Forget Patrick Kane getting hurt mid game. 
That's a team chasing you in the standings. You win that game. You have, I think, a five-point gap then. Yeah. Now it's a one-point gap. Mm -hmm. The Leafs didn't make the playoffs in the 2020 bubble season or with COVID season. They didn't make it. They were tied. Them and Columbus were tied for the 8-9 slot, and they didn't get to finish out the season. There were 12 games left, and the Leafs had, if I remember correctly, no defensemen left (laughs) because everyone was hurt. And the Columbus Blue Jackets had the exact same amount as, of points as the Leafs in the standings. They didn't make the playoffs, and who knows if they ever would have. Cool. And then they got beat by that team. So yeah. I'd say they didn't make the playoffs. I think Dubas made the right call <laughs> that year in not making trades. Like He was about to sign Zach Bogosian and then called him after the year's game and said no. And then he was going to make some trades, and then he said no. And that I think he made the right call. And uh, I wonder if this Leafs management group has gone... Don't know if this team's earned it yet. Now, that can all change. The The trade deadline's eight, seven or eight weeks away, right? March so 8th? if they go on a tear here, well, then I think your plan has changed. Yes. Right? But I at think- this, as it, if it were today, I think it's fair to say that they probably stand pat and go let's let's just wait this out if somebody comes to us with a what they call they call it a hockey trade yeah uh, which is sort of a catch all for any trade um but no, it's but, it's a trade that involves two teams with the same goal yes you, you know there's not a buyer and a seller mm. right right that's yeah. a good description yeah. yeah yeah so we'll see we'll see i would like them to make one because i think putting pontus holmberg on the top line is Sheldon Keefe screaming for help with his entire lungs? <laughs> oh, he got a goal last night. It went off his leg. Let's all stop. Yeah, he kind of kicked care. it I intentionally. Uh, I liked it. Like I, I like that little move with the back heel. Reward the kid, sure, but like, what's going on, man? What's going on? I like this it. was your 13th forward a week ago. Mm-hmm. What's going on? Yes, yes. What are we well, he, Now he's your first line left winger. Oh, great. <laughs> so good. I didn't so, know he was I a winger guess, until the priest. I guess you were told, weren't you? I certainly was. Yeah. Um, I do want to talk about the Oilers going 10 0 and 0. And here's the thing about the Oilers. And you never hear this about the Oilers. How they do it? Attention to detail. Oh, yeah. Playing strong defense, good goaltending. We knew they could score, but it's it's crazy because like I was told by our comment section that you actually can't teach defense. And what I'm no? seeing with the Oilers is that, yes, you can. Adam, compliments. Uh, compliments, section. I was also told by somebody this weekend that coaching doesn't matter all that much. And I'm like, well, <laughs> it doesn't matter all that much of the outcome of a game. It does. Whatever the Oilers... Like, it it you really does. You uh, know what's terrible? I still think Jay Woodcroft is an incredible coach. Yeah, he just may not have been a fit. And I think they, I think Jay Woodcroft galaxy brained it. I think if you gave him true serum right now, he'd be like, yeah, I tried to make him play a way that they can't play. And his goalies were fun. I think if terrible. Jay Woodcroft is still the head coach of the Edmonton Oilers, they have the same record. Yeah. Like they had no really? goal. To, yeah. Oh, I don't I know how much of this is Chris Nodlock. Like the team is so good right now, dude. They've won like ninety percent. Is it games. vibes though? Yeah, is but is it vibes? or is it they got goaltending to support it and now McDavid's healthy? Well, I mean, yeah, you know, Evan, Evan Bouchard's a star. Evander Kane has been good whenever he's paired up with McDavid. Drysaddle's back to being Drysaddle. Hyman's had an unreal season. Like I don't. How know. isn't he an all star? Yeah, that's yeah. weird. That's, that's unacceptable. Yeah. Or that's on Oilers fans. They should have voted for him. I mean, well, Canucks fans, there's like, what, six of them going? It's yeah, Oilers fans. <laughs> That's on you. The team, the team is an overall very good team. And I think Jay Woodcroft could have coached them to uh, 23, 15 and one. Sometimes it's like a change of perspective, though, right? You you just tune tune somebody out. Like you saw that. Did you, I think it was Tic Tac Tomar that had the Matthews like rolling his eyes uh, gif this weekend. Yeah. Um, and I believe that happened this weekend. I'm I'm not sure how media literate I am on that one because I don't want to get uh well did he have a beard where he's like rolling his eyes hard. Did he have a beard? Yeah, he had the same facial. Oh, okay. Because there's one from his his he had his sophomore had, season that was awesome. Okay, yeah. Oh, maybe it's that one. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But but the point is sometimes like okay, I'll be honest. Okay, let me give you an example. It's a bad example, but I'm gonna give it to you anyway. Oh, I can't wait. If I Try to introduce a new vegetable to my daughter's diet. <laughs> she will flatly tell me, uh, in in only a, in only the way that a four year old can. No, I simply won't. And I can beg and plead and scream, and I can have her sit there all night until bedtime, and she will sit there with her arms folded and go, "I will not touch that." If her auntie Lauren, which is my wife's sister, 
ah. happens to just put it in front of her, she will eat it. And she will continue eating it. After that, she's like, oh, that's actually really good. Sometimes the same message from a different source does make a difference. And I think, I think Jesse, you may be right about Woodcroft. And I don't know that Knobloch's been all that different because all he did was come in and say, hey, play responsible hockey, which Woodcroft was trying to get them to do. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's like, yeah, but I don't like your face and I'm not going to listen to you. <laughs> <laughs> which is, I'm pretty sure how my daughter feels about me sometimes. <laughs> oh, that's, that's the joy of a parent, being a parent. They love you know you who I will know. give credit to on the coaching staff? Because they didn't just make the change of Jay, of Jay Woodcroft. They also brought in Paul Coffey and put him behind the bench. I will give all of the credit in the world to Paul Coffey on how he has the defenseman playing defense. Mm. I think Evan Bouchard has taken such a step this season because his offense has always been there. His offense has been spectacular. But now he's also playing defense. And I think a lot of that is having Paul Coffey right next to you telling you how to play defense. I do not regret a single criticism of Evan Bouchard. Oh, he was uh, terrible. Early. He was bad. He's terrible. He was bad. I know his numbers are, his counting numbers are good. His underlying numbers are good. We went through the footage. He did not bend his legs. And generally speaking, you need to do that in the NHL. Um, but now he's just, I mean, I have him in fantasy folks and it's awesome. <laughs> it's awesome. I think having a voice like Paul Coffey in there, it's not just Bouchard. It's, it's the whole squad there. Like they're playing a lot better defense. Um, I don't like, I don't like um, their turnovers. Like I feel, still feel like they play a little loosey goosey because of how skilled they are offensively. They get away with everything. Sure. So, but like that's got to crack down come playoffs. But I think having a voice like Paul Coffey in the room helps your entire team play defense better. Yeah, you don't want to. What is it? The Dennis Rodman thing. You don't want to put a saddle on a Mustang or or whatever. Like uh, I'm thinking of the Last Dance. Mm -hmm. um, maybe that's just the way the Oilers are. And like if they can just cut it out a little bit and still score a bill. How many goals do you need to beat the Oilers these days? Five? Yeah, Fuck. I think so. <laughs> that sucks. Mm -hmm. That yeah. really sucks. And when Stuart Skinner is back to playing good hockey, you know, it's, yeah. it's hard to, it's hard to beat the Oilers. Um, I have a question for you guys. Sure. Currently, William Nylander and Connor McDavid are tied for six in NHL scoring. Cool. Now, Williams played four more games than Connor, so this isn't exactly fair, but um, Nikita Kucherov currently leads the league with mm -hmm. 72 points in 43 games. Wow. Bonkers. Um, uh, McDavid wow. has 57 and 37. Also bonkers. Will McDavid catch Nikita Kucherov by the end of this year? Yes. Yes. Easily. Yes. It's Connor McDavid. Bet against him. You're a fucking moron. Okay. Jesse. I'm going to be a moron and say oh. no. I'll just take the better odds. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I feel like the guy with the lead, I'll just take. Because I don't think Nikita, K Nikita Kucherov is falling off. N Nikita Kucherov. I, I don't like think, name. Uh, to me, I don't think he's falling off. To me, Nikita Kucherov is a fan from the stands, and Connor McDavid is the freeze. <laughs> he's going to. I end. love that video. I love. The freeze. If you don't know what the freeze is, do you know what the team is? I have no idea. Is it uh, the Cincinnati Reds? I want to say Atlanta Braves. Uh, it might be the Braves. It's yeah. like the Braves, Reds, or Guardians. It's yeah. one of those color schemes. <laughs> I'm, so trying to, I'm trying to picture the video in my mind. I'll, we'll look it up and I'll, we'll have the answer in two seconds. Some baseball team <laughs> has this thing uh, between innings, I guess, uh, where you have to beat the freeze. And the freeze is... Uh, it's the Atlanta Braves. It's the Atlanta Braves. Yeah. The freeze is a clear knockoff of, uh, of one of the characters from The Incredibles. I think it's... Um, yeah, the, the the guy... the Where is my super suit guy? Yeah, yeah. And you get a head start in a race. So, Matty, if you want to pull up the video, I won't play it, but that's the screenshot of how far ahead the fan is of, of the freeze. Oh and the God. freeze wins yeah. almost every time. <laughs> and then here it is. I this, this yeah, one. here's the fan oh, going, yeah, I'm about to beat the freeze. <laughs> and then he falls down. Yeah. Oh, and, oh. And the freeze beats him. Let's go freeze. <laughs> so if you watch it, you see how far ahead that's look at that. That's the gap. And that's when Anthopolis was signed to his extension. Yes. Uh, that's crazy. They got they got a big sponsor for this. This this uh, in-game thing too. racetrack. Beat the freeze. So right there at the right of your screen is Nikita Kucherov. 
<laughs> and on the left, you have Connor McDavid. And here he comes. Here he comes. <laughs> Now and he's gonna get you. <laughs> he's gonna get you. I hope. I hope we get a race like that. I Dude, hope we do. It's and I'm telling you, Kucherov is gonna finish the season with like 140 points. He's gonna have his arms in the air, and McDavid is gonna score eight points against whoever they play last, um, and he's gonna win. I want to check in with this periodically throughout the year because I think it was one of the the best stories from training camp. And it sort of got railroaded by the Babcock Columbus stuff. Yes. Um, and that is Steven Stamkos walking in day one <laughs> and saying, yo, they didn't call me. You, yeah. This is your I Roman Empire. Love this story. <laughs> love He's this right, story. Though. Like, that's crazy. It's a great story. <laughs> it's a great story. And the captain and of a near dynasty team coming in day one and going, yo, these guys pissed me off. Yeah. Top line left winger. Still. What do you like more? The actual Roman Empire or this story? Currently, I like the Stamco story better, but I have I've done you know I've given years to the Roman Empire. I'm mm. a little I'm a little burnt out on the Roman Empire to be honest with you. Oh. A little more interested in the first French Empire right now. We're going <laughs> revolution right through to Napoleon. Very interested. Um, uh, the the thing about Stephen Stamkos right now is he's 33 or 33rd in league scoring, which is pretty good. That's he's fun. got. He's got he's right behind or right ahead of Mark Stone and behind Vinny Trocek. He's got 41 points at 48. Or sorry, 41 points, 41 games, 18 goals, 23 assists. Solid numbers. OK, and this is the reason I want to bring this up is I want to go back to are the Lightning going to resign Steven Stamkos? Because mm -hmm. they have been like, we'll see. They've this been is, pretty mid too. they've been pretty mid. Here's the thing. And this stat doesn't matter until it matters. This this stat Within a few, like, plus one or minus one, eh, no one cares. But when it gets goofy, there's a problem. Steven Stamkos has the worst plus minus of any player in the top 50 in scoring in the NHL, and how it's a points? negative 20. What? Holy shit! Now, he plays on a line. In how many games? 41 games. He plays on a line with Braden Point and Nikita Kucherov. And you're probably asking me, well, what does Braden Point have? Braden Point has 44 points at 40 games or 44 games. He's a minus 13. Nikita Kucherov has 72 points in 43 games, and he's still a minus three. The leading scorer in the NHL is, is a, a negative minus. And he's almost double. Like he's almost at two points a game. Holy shit. So Dude, they I gotta get a they gotta get a gun. Like they gotta get a hired gun. They got they should be calling the senators. And trying to get, like, you know how we keep trying to trade Tarasenko and Kubalik? Dude, get someone to support that basically puck murderer, uh, Nikita Kucherov, and get a little bit of depth scoring. And then mm. that's your identity, is we score a shitload of goals and have Andre Vasilevsky. Mm. Jeez. I don't know where you would fit in this lineup, but Jake Gensel would be a nice addition oh, to the Tampa Bay Lightning because yes, he's, he's a UFA. And if uh, Kyle Dubas doesn't want to keep going with his roster and run it back, if they can't make the playoffs and all that, it might be good to sell on Gensel. There's and a hockey trade worth talking about. There's something right there. Especially, yeah, it doesn't even have to be a sell from the Penguins. It can no. be a hockey trade. I mean, You're he, allowed. Came, yeah. he came up this weekend. Freach brought him up. Like yep, they're, yep, they're, They've got a decision to make. Yep. Uh, There's something there, I think. I think you're right. I think you're right. And they're, the thing about the Lightning and the Bruins, too, is they're always in on the trade deadline. Mm -hmm. The Bruins and the Lightning always get their guy. Now, Tanner Janot was not the guy they should have gotten. Oof. But you have to argue, I mean, who's had a better trade deadline the last five years other than the Lightning and the Boston Bruins? The Lightning had one colossal miss. Other than that, it's just grand slams. Just bangers. Yeah. Bangers. Same with the, the Bruins. Like the Bruins, all the way back to who was the guy that? Oh, they, Charlie Coyle was a good. Charlie one. Coyle was a great one, but there was a guy they picked up that same deadline for more who didn't last as long, and he was like a big power forward. Taylor Hall deal, right winger. No, this is before Rick Taylor Hall. Not Rick Nash. No, it was before Rick Nash. Uh, I can't remember. Oh, uh, you, you know who I'm talking about? Yes, fucking. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh my god, and he wasn't. He had like one really good season, and oh shit. Yeah, but he we was, talked about him a lot. Yes. Because he cost them like a first round pick. That's how flash in the pan he was. But they always kind of get in there and grab their guy. <laughs> they spent a first round pick heading into the 2020 trade deadline. Do you remember who it was on? No. Andre Kasha. Whoa. Andre. He was a good player. 
He was so fucking good. Yeah, it's a, that's just concussions, man. I'll maintain that was a good... That, he was good with the Leafs until he got a concussion. He was a great player. Uh, Jake Ensel, by the way, 19 goals, 27 assists, 46 points, tied with Mitch Marner. And, nice. and uh, two points behind Austin Matthews. That makes me very upset. It shouldn't. <laughs> My, Matthews is 33 goals. I, I, I don't think... Like, Matthews is... He's never going to be the league leader in points. He's he's the goal guy. He's goal guy. Sure. Right? Um, the Stamkos thing, the that plus minus is very interesting. That's the worst of his career. He's last on the team in plus minus. Like, yeah, it's... Uh, he's right there at the bottom with Nick Paul, who's a minus 17, and then Stamkos at a minus 20. Was, so he's was, got... He's got good points, but that line's plus minus. And again, shitty stat. I'll get you. But minus 20 tells me there's a problem. Was yeah. Adam Wilde ahead of his time? Why is it? <laughs> no, I'm good. Uh, mm-hmm. do, you, do the Lightning re-sign Stamkos? Because I feel like it's like, well, you can't just replace a point of game. But but then you can't look at it like it's a point of game if you're letting in a goal every two games. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Yes. No, it's it's bad. It's bad. It's uh, untenable. It, it means you're are just relying on your power play. Which that lightning power play tears the Leafs up every time they play. Mm-hmm. And then what happens? Leafs win. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, lead and then there's a lot of there's a lot of teams who bring it against the Leafs. Like the Senators, if they only played the Leafs, the Senators would be a playoff team. Every Easily. Year. They, Easily. When the Senators want to play, they can play really well. When they're dialed? Yeah. Yeah. No, they're vibeless right now. But when they play the Leafs, they got the vibes. Sabres too. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I hate it. Uh, weirdly, Columbus. I don't know why Columbus always brings it against the Leafs. Yeah. Anyway, I thought uh, I thought that was interesting. I was trying to look at their their uh, five on five numbers versus their penalty um, versus their power play numbers, and they're not like crazy different. You know, they got um, they're seventeenth in the league in goals four, and then on the power play, oh, well, on, at five on four, they're they're tied for first. So there is actually uh, a little bit of a difference there. So at five on five, the Tampa Bay Lightning, in terms of goals four, are seventeenth. At five on four, their goals four is tied for first with the Colorado Avalanche. And you know what? So they are they, they are being carried a lot by the extra man. But isn't that like that's the thing about the Lightning in the playoffs? People are like, well, you can't wait for the 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 power plays, but they do capitalize. Like they are vicious power play performers in the playoffs it looks like it sorry i was just uh, i can't focus who leads the league in shorthanded goals against <laughs> there's so I'm many numbers just curious the, a- the adhd get oh you want yeah. goals yeah. against at five on four it's not it's not just the uh it's entirely um five on four only well. right it's isolated so the islanders have not allowed one at five on four who's allowed the most uh, carolina, carolina was seven seven these are these are shorthanded, right? That's what that's what you wanted. Yeah, yeah. Sarah, Carolina's allowed seven shorthanded goals. Okay, at last, five on last five. one, and then I know we need to continue the show. Okay, I want to see uh, Corsi. Uh, where is so this is your power play Corsi shot attempts Corsi percentage. I have a feeling the Leafs is dog shit. Uh, the San Jose Sharks eighty percent Corsi. Oh my! At five God. on four. Wow, really? Uh, the Minnesota Wild lead the league at 90%, 90.8%. Where the really? Leafs at? The Leafs? Uh, it just feels like they... Oh, they're middle of it. 87, yeah. yeah. It just feels like they give up a lot of opportunities. When they're on a five-on-four advantage. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, eh, they're right in the middle of the pack. They're 15th. Um, their penalty kill this year, though, if we're back on the list, it's just short, short, short notice, uh, short stat, Leafs suck at penalty kills. Yeah, that's it. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I wonder if a guy. This is gonna sound silly, but I wonder if if the Panther or Panthers Penguins not continue not to go with this roster. Let's say like Jake Gensel goes on the market. I wonder about a guy like Nolachari. Oh, like I love Nolachari. Baby, come back. Uh, would love if he had stuck around. You can blame it all. Oh, oh. That guy. Uh, that guy doesn't fit a team that would go through a rebuild. Sure, would be great back on the Leafs again. Baby, come back. They should have signed. I will happily give Dubas all the seventh round picks he wants. We got three fifth rounders this year. He oh, he would love that. Take him. He would love that. Trade them all down and turn them into seven sixes. Oh, <laughs> Dubas. <laughs> you, you know the, what is it, Pavlov's dog? Yeah. Uh, Dubas just started salivating somewhere in Pennsylvania. <sighs> trade down. <laughs> trade down, trade down. Um, I don't know why you just, you made me crusty the clown laugh uh, because of that. <laughs> I, because I'm just so gosh darn excited. I would love Noel Achari back. Um, 
I loved seeing this, and I didn't realize this was an issue, but uh, Frege brought up uh, in the second intermission um, on Hockey Night that uh, Cody Hodgson is trying to make a comeback. He was drafted 10th overall by the Canucks in 2008. He is a member of my 2010, 2011, and 2012 uh, fantasy draft teams in uh, in NHL, EA Sports yep. NHL. Always was my second line center because his potential was so high. And video games don't care about injuries. No, it doesn't <laughs> exist. Uh, Cody Hodgson uh, had, and I didn't know this, he has malignant uh, hypothermia. Hypothermia? Thermia? I, it, but it's I like did, not, I have I, never heard of anyway, it. Anyway, it's a rare muscle disorder and it made him prone to injuries. So he had to retire. He had a week back. And then I guess he's 34 now and he got a completely clean bill of health last summer and he's training five to six times a week. And uh, Fried said he's not, he understands that he's not starting in the NHL, knows nothing is guaranteed, but would like to resume his career and is looking for an opportunity. And I look at this and I compare and contrast because. Uh, the ECHL Growlers <laughs> yep. just signed Terry Ryan to a contract. And I was like, is that a one day deal on his 47th birthday? So it wasn't. It was he's first off, he's a local guy. Second, the Growlers rule. And Terry got out there and had a fight and he had a great. You should watch the the Jeff Merrick uh, retweeted his press conference after the game. It's 13 it, minutes. Really, really good. I feel like, listen, if Terry Ryan's gotten a shot at 47 years old, I'm sure the Leafs organization could give Cody Hodgson a, a team that needs players, by the way. Cody Hodgson, be a, why not? Well, so I obviously thought of the Leafs right away. Um, because, because of what we're always thinking about. Well, this. well, and he's an Ontario guy, though. And you can have him play for the Marlies. But, but uh, the AHL is a really, really good league. And he hasn't played for what eight years, mm -hmm. seven years. Oh, that's a difficult league to start in. Mm -hmm. So if he's willing to go to Newfoundland, cool. Um, yeah, absolutely. But I think this is going to be a pretty long road back. Mm -hmm. um, I would love to see it for him. He was so good. He was, um, if I'm not mistaken, the year I uh, was covering junior with uh, Gino Retta's hockey show, mm -hmm. he won league MVP, like all of, I think it was either the OHL or all of the CHL mm -hmm. over John Tavares, who was like a phenom at mm -hmm. the time. Cody Hodgson was supposed to be unreal. Yep. And he never met that potential uh, because his body wouldn't let him. So yeah. I... You know, you only get one life and, uh, you know, I, if Cody Hodgson doesn't make it, he'll know he tried. Yeah. He'll, he'll know he gave it another shot and everyone should be cheering for him. I am very, I'm completely fascinated how this works out. I think the AHL is, that's really, that's really difficult. I think that he would understand that he's not starting in the A. I well, he, he, he certainly he understands to. he's not starting in the NHL. Yeah. So I'm sure he's aiming for the A. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe he gets there. Um, 2016 is a long time. It is a, a really long, long time. time. Yeah. And to be 33 now. And Four. 34 and climbing back. Like, But if yeah. you see him at least play in the E and then the A, that's really impressive too. Because then you could parlay that to several hundred thousand dollars a year in Europe, which is good money without an escrow. Maybe like, that's where he goes. Well, I, and, and I wonder if you start in North America, you try to make your way up to the AHL, have a good showing there. And then, you know, you can go play in the Swedish Elite League. You can go play in the Swiss League. You can, you know, wherever you want to go. Um, there's there's money to be made over there. And I know it's not the millions of dollars that the NHL has, but um, you get to live in <laughs> Europe and make a fortune. It's pretty good. I feel like if he's working like this, he can at least be a European hockey player. Yeah. You yeah, know, a professional, you know, over there. And there's it's not just like the the top tier, it's not just the KHL or the SHL. There are tiers to European hockey as well. Like if yep. he needs to work up from there, there is room for professional hockey uh, out there. Like there's a spot for him, I would think so, based on the way he's training. Yep. It's SPHL, ECHL. And, and like I don't know where he's living these days. I uh was just looking it up. Mm -hmm. He's I'm birthplace Toronto. Have you ever heard of it? Yeah. And, and I was wrong. He is 33. He's don't gonna, age he's him. He's going to turn 34 soon. Don't age him. I know. Yeah. What are you aging him for? That's my bad. That's yeah. my bad. Um, <laughs> that reminds me of another guy, uh, Peter Holland, who played 
10 games, has played 10 games for the Colorado Eagles this year. Um, he's got eight points. Pretty I don't similar s- situation. Don't see him on the roster right now. Mm-hmm. So I'm not sure if that if that ended or if there's injury or whatever. I don't I have not been paying attention he, to the Colorado Eagles lately. Uh, did uh, he get any points? Yeah, eight points in ten or, games. Eight points in ten games? Are you fucking serious? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Holy shit. Yeah. In the AHL, that's really impressive. Yes. So I'm not I'm looking up trying to find information on Peter Holland, to be honest with you, and I I haven't seen it. Um I've been looking as as you guys have been speaking, trying to figure it out. But uh um, you know, the latest news on him is from like 2023 in August when he signed and and oh. tried to make the the avalanche but still those stories are cool stories. What there's no reason to cheer against them. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. That's really cool and I want them to succeed. Yeah, that'd be ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, and cheer, cheering against them. <laughs> Boo! <laughs> Boo Disney movie. That sucks. Yeah, I'm looking at Peter Holland news and I I can't uh, can't see anything. So Anyway, eight points mm-hmm. in 10 games, though. Hot damn. If we're talking about guys coming back from long times out, uh, Gabriel Landeskog was skating. Uh, that is a very exciting development Uh-oh. to see that for Avs fans. I didn't think he'd ever come. Holy back. moly. Uh oh, um, rest of the league. And apparently, it's not anytime soon, but who knows if he could make a playoff appearance for the Avs. Oh, boy. The NHL has really screwed up. Um, my expectations for what not anytime soon means. Because they'll be like, oh, he's not coming back anytime soon. And they come back in 10 days. <laughs> and like that is supposed to mean he may never play again. He may not play again this year. Oh, he's not coming back anytime soon. Adam, Gabriel Landeskog can play tomorrow. Do you know why Steve is so burned? Because by- of Tate's freaking Thompson. Who did it again, by the way? <laughs> did what again, Steve? He was injured, and then they're like, ah, he's playing tonight. Gotcha. Steve, you're just upset that you didn't listen to some advice and didn't yeah, do why the did trade. You make and that instead, trade? you made the trade for, and you traded away a guy who was supposed to be out long term, and he wasn't out long term. I kicked and ass now- in that trade, though. No, he didn't. Yes, I did. Who'd I got. You get? I got oh Joseph Wall, so that hasn't gone. <laughs> like, what are you <laughs> talking about? I started with that. Let me fucking finish. What's the whole trade? Just read out the trade. <laughs> Let me read out the trade. What is it? It was uh, it was uh, I got Joseph Wall. I got Morgan Riley, who's been spectacular. Mm-hmm. I got uh, Carter Verhage, who's been absolutely unreal. And I forget the other guy. Let me look it up. Let me look it up. Mm-hmm. Fill time while I look it up, please. Mm-hmm. Okay. This is your Harper Hagee was a good This pick. is your Dangle Navy uh fantasy hockey league that's kind of uh undermanned by normal fantasy hockey teams uh standards because you guys only have eight players, right? So everybody's kind of loaded up. Undermanned. Yeah, I think I think you guys need a, some expansion <laughs> coming to your league because everybody's just kind of just just has all stars up and down their lineup. Yeah, you, you guys need to add more people. Yeah, I feel like an eight man fantasy team uh, league. Sorry, I should say uh, needs a couple more guys. You need to get up to 12. 12 I is, think you're right. 12 is the comfy number. 10's like all right, but 12, 12 is the sweet spot. Why can't I find it? What are you when did Tage Thompson come back is what I'm trying to figure. I think you did the trade in November, late November. Oh, it was late. Or November. early December, one or the other. Okay. I will find it, it was and I will redeem there. myself because this is it's ended up being pretty good. Yeah. Can, can you not? Know I found it. Oh, OK, there you go. <laughs> when was it? Uh, it was December 4th. Oh, there you go. Early, early December. <laughs> I traded injured Tage Thompson. Yeah. Who turned out to be injured for like a day, a day, literally no less. No, he, he played that night. <laughs> yeah, he like, played that night. Fucking unbelievable. <laughs> Dougie Hamilton, who is it uh, doesn't sound like he's coming back this year. And this is who you, you traded away. Uh, that's who I traded yes, away. Yes. And I got Joseph Wall. Just those two? Yep. Okay. Woo-hoo-hoo! Joseph Wall, Morgan Riley, Carter Verhage, and Sergey Bobrovsky. Okay, so Riley, I did great. Vi- Riley, Riley Verhage has probably done well for you. I don't know. They've done Bobrovsky. great. I haven't checked in on Bobrovsky and how he's done. Bob's done well. Got it. Mm. Hey. Bob's, are, we're happy with our team. Uh, Dan Flashes is happy with their team. I'm currently in second behind um the guy that got tage thompson myrtle no oh myrtle's beating you no uh i believe ian is haunted house where we we all have um i think you should <laughs> cool leave names. theme oh. names oh oh okay 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 yes, that makes we more have sense. we ha- i'm dan flashes we also have i'm doing the best at this uh haunted house 
Uh, I'm not reading that one out loud. Good. Uh, and here for the zip line. I would have been like, how do I make money at this? <laughs> What's the, you know? Oh, I, I got, got to make money off this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's too good. Is anybody? I'm doing something. <laughs> no, uh, we have a uh, big. We we do have big David David. Big David David. Which it's one's a playoff of Big Save Dave, which was then Big Save David, and then it was Big David David. Listen, it, to be fair it to them, funny, it's funny to us. To be fair, okay. To be fair <laughs> to them, long, it was yeah. their inside joke. Like, yes, he's yes. not bringing it to the show like no, everybody no, should get no, no, no. You know, yeah. I get. I'm fair. Fair. Yeah. Fair enough. Dave, this is this I, is for the eight guys in the league. Yeah, <laughs> the, pa- the uh, man, patterns I was, are out of this world. I was bragging this weekend big time about finishing third in our football pool. Next year we're getting rid of the third place trophy. What we did it? No we did way. We did it this year because we did it this year because uh, it was the first year for a lot of you guys playing fantasy football. Adam Wild Memorial Trophy is for, third place. Yeah, no, it'll go down with the um, with the goal save percentage trophy. You know. <laughs> what, what was it? The MBNA oh. Mastercard. What was the guy? Crozier. Oh yeah, C- Mr. Crozier. It yeah. turned out. Um. Uh. So he worked for Mastercard. Did yes, we? Did we yeah, go through that? Yeah. yeah, and yeah then, we did say that. Yeah. So it. it was. A we MasterCard. can't do this again. <laughs> yeah, we don't. No. We don't have to do it all over. No. Again. no. <laughs> Let's not relitigate that. Some people, no. Some people tweeted us like more info about it and left it in the comments. It was very fun. Um. But yes, there should be a goal save percentage award. Now. Now, Steve. Uh, Steve, we, I, we didn't lead with this because we wanted to talk about the front next and things like that. But uh, Steve was, uh, along with Maddie, I actually, I think Mad Dog was pretty upset too. Oh. Um, when they walked into the studio this morning. Why? 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 Oh. <laughs> oh, I think we need to pot up Why? Mad's mic for this. Mm. We, we got, oh, yeah. What's the problem, guys? What complaint do you have? So, our building mm-hmm. has like a weird little. I don't know. What would you call it? Alcove. And then you go up the stairs Mm -hmm. and walk across the upper floor to the main studio. Sometimes the stairway is cold. (coughs) I knew there was something wrong with my now half bald head. um, When I got to the top of the stairs and it was even colder. Mm. We checked on the, uh, the thermometer or a little digital thingy that we have. Adam, can you tell the class what what the temperature was in Celsius? It was 10.5 degrees. Why? <laughs> now, to be fair to me, I like it I like a cold studio cuz it keeps people awake, right? Cold is funny. Yes. Okay. We, every studio is cold. Yeah, we can't have it hot in here just with the equipment and all that stuff. It needs to be at a relatively cool temperature. Right. Relatively cool should be around 18 for, degrees for Americans. It's 51 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah. Now the thing was we left this weekend and there is heat coming up from the main floor, but they're on two different heating things. Cause this mm-hmm. used to be an apartment Yes, that we've converted into a studio. So it has its own separate and we didn't leave the heat on. So there is heat coming up and through the building. That's keeping it warm. Cause it's not good to not leave the heat on, mm-hmm. but it got really cold this weekend and we didn't have the, heat. it's not like I like AC'd it down to 10 and a half. So I didn't actually think it was that bad. Justin was up here working in a t-shirt. He said he was cold, but like he wasn't shivering. My feet are freezing right now. Are they? Yes. My hand is so cold. <laughs> <laughs> we I'm, have the heat on. Yeah, it's, it's guys, warmed up on. now. I have my hand like switching the cameras on the switcher for anybody that, like doesn't know how that works. And like I keep putting it like under like my leg between the chair because I'm trying to warm it. Oh up. my God. <laughs> Adam, that's got to be Adam. some sort of like worker's right. I'm sure it is. <laughs> yeah. And that's not where I wanted it. Sorry, I, Maddie. I can't, I, can't, I can't see you. You're you're hidden in a cloud of your own breath. <laughs> like. <laughs> Adam, <laughs> what's the Ontario workplace safety? People? I think we should call them and get them in. Oh yeah, that's what it would be. Well, listen, it would be it would be one thing if I kept it there. I did I'd turn like the to heat back a on. Complaint, yeah, against my own company. I th- I believe that I <laughs> it's too cold. I made a mistake. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You turned it off. Okay. Have you felt cold this entire show? Honestly, uh, yes. Because you you you've acted normal. I have not seen one shiver in that body. That's Jesse, have you seen a shiver? That's because I'm gangsta. A shiver from Steve? No, but we are relative. We are usually pretty chilly in here. Like we can't come in here and wear shorts and a t-shirt unless no. we are Adam Wild, who prefers that even in, in the summer in I minus do. degree but weather. This is better than your basement. 
which was even <laughs> cold. <laughs> I remember. Oh, I remember. When I well, that's because it was literally underground. When yeah. I was the intern for Adam, we used to have wars over the temperature of the studio. Okay. Okay. But <laughs> to be fair, okay. So uh, mm-hmm. Leah, our producer after Jesse left, uh, is from Jamaica. No. She would be the first one in. She would set the studio temperature to 25 degrees Celsius. Well, no, so you that's... Make sure all involved... I mean, it was That's little, too much. Yeah. It was a little much. Well, yeah. And it's 5.30 in the morning and you're already tired and then you're like, I, I need to take a nap. Like, it's... You need... You need to get... <laughs> yeah, but was it set can. to 25 and then you moved it to 17? Yes. Or did you move it to he like a comfy... Yeah, like 22 or 21? We had an air return machine. Remember we had those two air return machines where yeah. we never changed the filters? Um, and, uh, I had one near me and it would be pumping like 17, <laughs> right? And then Jax had the one near her and Leah and that would be pumping like 22. 22. I think it's <laughs> also women tend to get colder too. Cause we have like lower iron levels. Is that, is that true? Yes. I don't want to get is like always too cold. graphic, but it has to do with like periods basically, really? because you lose more blood. Oh, like, so it's like See? our blood doesn't run throughout our body as much as you guys. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. So that's why I'm chilly all the time. Learn something. And now you learn something. Anti-woman. No. <laughs> oh, yeah, Adam. <laughs> You're really podcasting now. I, you got on the women-hating bandwagon. You the last episode. You know what I don't like about women, yeah. said every male podcast. He's a real podcaster, Adam Wilde. <laughs> I am away from you. Yeah? I am away go. from you. Yeah. <laughs> Are you? Yes. It's because you're not alpha enough, Steve. No. Adam Wild bracket alpha male blue check mark. I'm happy to be beta on this. <laughs> I am a little beta fish. Jesse, can we uh, can we do the press conference? Yes, we can. The presser S D P. The Steve Dangle press conference. Yeah. You being a big baby. No, no, now that I brought it up, now you're thinking about it. No, I'm just, mm-hmm. I'm just so By the way, uh, Alan Walsh's show that we released yesterday, Agent Provocateur, really, really insightful. And one of the main takeaways for Alan was, listen, team drafts a guy, they sour on the guy, they trade him. Nobody bats an eye. Guy gets drafted by a team, sours on the team, asks for a trade. He's the worst person ever. Why is that? <laughs> So it's something you should look into. Something you should look into. uh, It's a wonderful episode. I I listened to it yesterday. Did you? Yes, I did. What are your thoughts? Oh, shit. I'm caught. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I I listened to it. It was, I mean, it was, it was classic. Alan um, always brings up the player's perspective, but he does it in a way that is like, he's not shilling, right? Like, you know, he's going to be pro player. And you're like, all right, let's hear this. And then they're like, oh, shit, he's got a really good point. <laughs> like, players have no rights, basically. Yeah. And uh, Cutter Gauthier flexed his right, which is literally, yeah, I don't want to sign with you. Yeah, so I'll go back in the draft if you don't. It's almost it. like Alan knows what he's talking about and can make a compelling argument. Yes. Well, and like, <laughs> he's he's right, though. Like, yeah, a team sours on a player. Like, how many times have we had the Nick Robertson conversation where we're like, ah, you know, it's probably time to get rid of him. It's probably time to trade him. Well, but, actually, we're the ones advocating to keep him. Well, I'm just stupid. I, I would like to keep him. Uh, but like if he felt the same way about the Leafs, that piece of shit. How dare you? Yeah. 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 You son of a gun. Yeah. You why I oughta. James, Dr- Jamie Drysdale, the most popular player since like Bobby Clark. Like it's <laughs> by simply being the other guy. The guy who was traded. Not Cutter. His yeah. name could easily be not Cutter Goche. And they'd be thrilled. Yeah, it's funny. It's it's uh it, it is a and and again that that trade was sold. Like like, you know, no offense to Jamie Drysdale, but he does not project to be the player that Cutter Goche will and a second round pick. Yeah, well, and it's funny because this the uh, Cutter Goche has been compared to Eric Lindros. They're two different situations, but Allen kind of brought them together in an interesting way. Mm -hmm. Um, Because Lindros told the Quebec Nordiques, do not draft me. I won't play for you. I won't play for you. Do not draft me. And they said, that's nice. And they drafted him anyway. Yeah. And and I think that was a smart move by them. And the reason he didn't want to sign there, by the way, it's not because he didn't like Quebec. It's their owner. Their owner was a... Well, he was an owner. And he was not a great guy, apparently. Not great. I forget his name. Allegedly. 
Uh, it was it not Rajon Rule? That was the Marcel. The Marcel. Marcel. Yeah, it, it I really can't forgettable guy. Uh, but you, if if you're the Quebec Nordiques, you go, well, I'll I'll draft him and trade him and look at that. It won the franchise a cup eventually. Oh, well, they they got quite the king's ransom. Sure. And also the Flyers were dumb enough to trade away Peter Forsberg. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but it's it is a uh, it, it, it. I thought it was an interesting perspective, and it's funny that like nobody said it. Not it does it does kind of it, for me it was a reframe because I think there were some people in the comments who were upset about me not pushing back on Allen and I'm like I didn't feel like I needed to push back on Allen more I did give him I gave I gave I went back at him about the Lindros thing I went back at him with about a couple other things but I felt like the entire world had been one way yes and there's there's Allen in a storm like what about this perspective. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like it's like a, a yeah, like on a you, boat just in the rain. If you want the you know? anti what Alan was saying, simply consume any other piece of media about this that's, ordeal. That's what I like, thought. Dude, I'm like, I don't need to. I don't need to be devil's advocate here. The f the Flyers. Flyers like it was like flank them. Like like yeah. Friggin well, you heard from the, and this when, guy. When and was that the last guy? time in one day in the middle of the season you heard from the president of? Of, of a team, like president of Comcast, not even the president of the yeah. team, president of the, the the company that owns the team, then the president of the team, then the GM of the team, and the coach of the team. It's one of the most spectacular fuck this guy media tours I've seen in the NHL in, I can't think of another one. I really can't. Like, did Boston do this to Phil Kessel? No. <laughs> I don't think so. They just moved on. They just, like, did... You know, I, I and know. I get, I get riling your fans up. I get. Listen, if I, I'm a Leaf fan and God doesn't want to be here, I don't want him here either. Yeah. Uh, but I also don't think that Cutter Gauthier did anything. Well, like it's rude to okay. not take conversations and refuse to speak to anyone. Oh man, you know what? No one's ever been rude in the NHL. <laughs> you should listen to their mic'd up segments. You want to talk about rude? Anyway, you should listen to the show yeah. before we blow the whole thing. Sorry. It's 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 really good. Sorry, Jesse, go ahead with a question. Oh, the first thing, um, there's two defensemen who had interesting weekends. I just want to shout out and get into the show. One, Vince Dunn, as oh. the as the resident watcher of Seattle Kraken content, uh, Vince Dunn beat the shit out of Cole Sillinger over the yeah, weekend. Yeah, he, he did? <laughs> oh. <laughs> and Vince Dunn, everybody, is about that life. Um, but the thing that happened in that instance is that Cole Sillinger had a boarding hit on Matty Beneers. And it was bad. It was, um, it was a boarding call, and they call it on the ice, you know? And, they, and they, it's a penalty. He's going to the box. But Vince Dunn, he's like, I'm going to, before we, we get on the power play, I'm going to go here and take this in matters in my own hands. Proceed to beat the shit out of Cole Sillinger. Coming out of that... They give a five-minute major to Cylinder for the fighting. They give the, him the two-minute boarding for the incident. And then they give Vince Dunn the five-minute major for fighting. And they give him no instigator call. On that power play from the boarding, Seattle scores. What? And they win that game over the Columbus Blue Jackets. And I feel like if this is a game that's not between the Seattle Kraken and the Columbus Blue Jackets, everybody's up in the, uh, up in arms about, hey, weren't we just going through this about the referees that's correcting this yeah. and giving these instigator calls? And this leads directly to a game winning goal. And because it's two lesser market teams, it's not a big deal about how atrocious NHL refereeing has been this entire season. Well, we somehow managed to go the entire show without mentioning the cross check on Austin Matthews. <laughs> like, <laughs> wait, I don't know how we pulled that off. Are you kidding? I, I, I know. He, Austin Matthews magically decided to just fall into the boards. He just fell. And then, by the way, that was the same ref the next night uh, when, and he's like, here, here you go, Leafs. Have all the power plays you want in the first period. And then they proceeded to do dick all with them. And he went, ha, huh? see, shut up. Kelly Sutherland. Um, and I forget who his uh, partner was, but yeah, that's trash. The Leafs got two instigators in the same game, mm -hmm. and I argue that they deserve both of them. If you want to, Matt, you can't show this, but Steve, Adam, if you want to see the boarding and the fight, I'll play it there for you. So here's the hit. Oh, Oof, boy. Bad, bad hit. Yeah, not fight. not a good distance from the boards. You got to fight. No. Oh, and then, oh, yeah, and then oh. and Vince Dunn, everybody can wow. beat the shit out of a guy. Dude, now, <laughs> you know what's nuts about Vince Dunn? He couldn't get in the lineup in St. Louis. All they no. could talk about was what a problem he was. And I, I again, they the reason the, the St. Louis Blues fell off is because they let Petrangelo go and they didn't make room for this guy. This guy has been phenomenal since he stepped 
foot in Seattle. You, he was ready. They you, just wouldn't play him. You can and, and, say, and all the Leaf fans are like, we want Barube as a coach. I'm like, do you watch Western Conference games? No, you don't. He you, won a cup, but no. You, you can say Barube. you can say that Cole Sillinger is greedy for fists to the face. <laughs> you see? The uh, Ducky get sandwich. It? Tate McRae. You, you get it? Oh. You get it? oh. oh. The now game at it. the time was 3-3 in the middle of the second period when all of this Hell occurred. Yeah. They go on to score on the power play, make it 4-3, and they end up winning the game 7-4. Listen, so I, I understand the dangers of fighting, but if you're going to pull that shit, get ready to have your face caved in. By the way... No, this, but there should be an instigator penalty. 100%. Yeah, but yeah. they... they that, that the inst- okay, listen. Vince the instigator Dunn- rule has been flawed since day one. It's never worked. It's never been applied properly. It's never. No one ever knows when they're going to call it. The instigator rule is is just uh, number one bullshit. And I think it's time we just admit it. I don't think they're going to get rid of it. Uh, but it is number one bullshit. It's number one bullshit in how it's implemented. Because, like, I'll be honest. Like, <coughs> two for boarding. I'm mm-hmm. okay with. That's not five. So I think I think it should be four on four coming out of that, to be mm-hmm. honest. Yeah, yeah. You should, you should get the two minutes for, for the hit. You should get two minutes for instigating. You should get five each for fighting. Like, fighting. That's it's. I think refereeing in the NHL has just never been consistent. Oh, so, <laughs> and, and it's just well, more and more apparent no, as the neat. season goes along, and it's crazy. They're um, the best refs in the world, Jesse. <laughs> yeah, Gary will tell you that. Now, so I hadn't seen that incident until today, but... Um, people were talking about Vince Dunn and what Vince Dunn beating the dog shit out of Cole Sillinger um, brought to light again yes. was one of the most surreal clips in hockey that I've ever seen. Jesse, I don't know if we're able to show it. We can't play it. My but assumption I can, is not. We can play it in here for just if Adam, Adam you have haven't you seen, seen this? this. I haven't seen A young Vince Dunn. This is Vince Dunn and Curtis Gabriel uh, after something happened on the ice, they're in the AHL. They go um, down the tunnel or whatever the AHL tunnel is. They're not on the ice. They're not on the benches. They are heading to their respected dressing rooms. They're in the tunnel. Curtis Gabriel engages Vince Dunn. And Adam, I will let you look at what happens next. Oh. 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 The, yeah, the... They they fight. I can't play the video. No, no, Maddie. play it for Adam. Like, take yeah, it off Maddie, pull it off. Yeah, sorry, sorry. So sorry, I can sorry. play it for him. Okay, so I, he will, can I will see. narrate this for anybody that's there never seen this video like me. Okay, so Vince Dunn. Vince Dunn of the Chicago oh, yeah. Wolves. Oh, here comes Curtis Gabriel. You Turn. can hear them turning his head. And then, oh, the security's rushing in. Oh, Gabriel's there. Vince Dunn, Curtis Gabriel. Wow, Curtis Gabriel's taller than Vince Dunn. Oh! <laughs> Vince Dunn cold cocks him. Curtis Gabriel. And, and but what's... The most wild part of the clip is the fight happened. It happened to be caught on camera. And, and then for some reason, they played it on the Jumbotron. They're showing and it the on the Chicago tr- Wolves <laughs> lose their minds. Man, that franchise rules. I, I don't think we've heard from the Chicago Wolves from behind the scenes and stuff like that. They they didn't invite look us look down. Like, <laughs> like that franchise. There's something really cool going on there, man. They're wild. They're, they're wild. They're I, wild. I don't know what the final score of that game was. It's impossible Chicago lost. Oh, they better not have lost that. <laughs> well, they're not it's impossible. You can't lose that game. They all looked like they were ready to like you talk about grown adults having childlike you got exactly what you asked Santa for for Christmas reactions to imagine being in the building for that. There was a knockout heading to the locker rooms. It happened to be caught on camera and they played it on the Jumbotron. By the way, they should have. In the NHL, I feel like it might be poor taste. <laughs> AHL. In the AHL, fuck oh, yeah. that. Yo, Go they, full so shores. They should have played tor- Torts Go trying to get into the Flames locker room. <laughs> well, <laughs> imagine throughout the stadium. So people would go nuts. I would argue. Very dangerous. <laughs> I'd argue it's relevant. Because oh, it's relevant, but you you safety reason you probably don't do that. <laughs> no, no, no. But I mean, I mean, the fans are all probably sitting there going, "What happened? Yeah, why sure. isn't Torts there? Why is this player in trouble or that?" I don't remember what the fallout was from that. I know Torts got like a three game suspension or something. I I know. So so this is weird, but I I don't know. There are certain replay rules that leagues have 
yeah. with what you're allowed to play. Like in hockey, they're actually pretty loose because you hear the fans go, oh, when they're reviewing something. Baseball right? used to be brutal. Baseball, when when uh, my ex-girlfriend worked for the team, uh, you I would sit there and I, I'd i watch a play that like, you know, just happened and they wouldn't replay it. And she's like, you can't. Yeah. Especially mm-hmm. if it's controversial. You're not allowed to replay it because they don't want fights. Now, and they changed that are, rule. Have yeah. they changed that rule? Yeah, yeah. They've changed it since. Now, baseball, you're allowed to show everything on Good. the jungle. Yeah, show. umpires yeah. are donkeys in real time. <laughs> wow. Dude, they're brutal. Yeah, they're, they've changed I, that. I criticize hockey refs, baseball umpires, bottom yeah. of the barrel. Hockey refs, I would give like the Nobel Peace Prize to, to compared <laughs> to uh, baseball refs. Um, terrible. Shout out the Kraken, though, for their win streak. We're giving love yeah. all of the Oilers. Kraken on unbelievable win streak. Jared McCann, once again, just putting up goals. Two goals, one assist in that game. Uh, he's been on fire, too. He's been really good. And yeah. by the way, bottom of the barrel in at the professional. Hold league. on, hold on. Who? Who scored a bunch of goals? Jared McCann. Ah. Yeah. Did he what get is- a, a video? No, he didn't get a <laughs> former video. Leaf, Jared McCann. That's right. Yeah. No, we had. Should've. We couldn't have protected him. Could not have protected. He should have got a video. No. Same with Martin Skula, Olaf Kolzig, mm-hmm. all the other guys who were technically Leafs and never played. Yep. Um, the other defenseman I wanted to shout out was Charlie McAvoy, who passed Ray Bork for the most overtime goals by a Bruins defenseman. We don't need to compliment Charlie McAvoy. <laughs> You don't. No, I don't think we need to say good <laughs> things. Leave about, that out. <laughs> don't need to say good things about. I feel McAvoy. like if you think about Bruins defensemen and all time, and Charlie McAvoy is at the top of a list, that's pretty darn cool. I don't no, think about two. Them. I don't think about them at all. There's Actually. two reasons McAvoy has passed um, Bobby Orr. One Ray is, Bork. Oh, it's Ray Ray Bork for Sorry. overtime goals by a defenseman. Ray oh Bork. well, then never mind. Why? I was going to say Bobby Orr because uh, he was so good that games. Never got to overtime. Oh, nah. but it's Ray Bork. Yeah. So who played? You know what? Now game. I'm mad. That's my line mate. How dare you, Charlie? Now you're mad. <laughs> I'm so mad that I'm coughing. I'm choking on my own words. <laughs> shout out, shout out, Charlie McAvoy. Um, no, no. I don't think we will. <laughs> uh, I don't think we will. I think delete this part. Yeah. Rory, delete the whole thing. Rory on our Discord <laughs> server. Uh, you can find the link to our Discord server on sdpn.ca wants to bring it back to the Toronto Maple Leafs. Rory says, are we starting to see the back end of John Tavares' contract really hurt the Leafs? His point production has been decreasing pretty rapidly throughout the season. And he outlines this. First 10 games, five goals, seven assists, Mm -hmm. 12 points. Excellent. Games 10 to 20, two goals, six assists, eight points. Games 20 to 30, nine points. Games 30 to 40, Five points. Mm. His shooting percentage is also at 5.75 this season, down from down 10% from last season. And his average over the previous three seasons has been 9.84%. Um, what are your thoughts? I think what you outlined is he's been cold recently. Mm-hmm. Like he hasn't been... Based on the way you opened that, I thought you were going to say there's been a steady, consistent decline. That's not what you outlined. 12, 8, 9, 5 in the 10 game increments throughout the season. Yeah, he's That's... in a he's in a slump now. And because of the shooting percentage, like to me, that says he's due for a regression. So I'm actually not all that worried. I think I think um, what hurt the Leafs was the pandemic. Uh, the Leafs signed a lot of these deals, Tavares specifically, and then Marner and Matthews around him uh, with the expectation that the salary cap was going to go up three to four million bucks a year. We've outlined this a thousand times. And so, yes, does 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 it hurt to have uh, uh, a guy on the back half of his career making what does he make? Eleven and eleven. Um, yeah, I guess. But I, I look at John Tavares and I look at a guy who is defensively responsible and really great well, in tight corners and fantastic recently, in front of the yeah. net. Yeah, no, but but generally but like 90 percent of the time he's been a leaf. Generally. And I, I, I don't know. I mean, next year it will be the last year of his deal. You see a lot of people saying how he's cooked. He's not cooked. He won't be cooked. Is he going to regress? Yes. I think where you really see the weakness of John Tavares is the skating. If they're against yes. like you saw it against Colorado when that when when. Teams that can skate you because the Leafs aren't people don't talk about this. The Leafs are not fast, right? Mm. They're not a quick team. No, but they don't. Colorado's insane. Uh, okay, fair enough. Like there's uh, you there, saw it against Tampa though. M- McKinnon McDavid. That's one two in terms of speed. Sure, 
Yeah. Okay. But but my point stands, right? Yeah. You're going to see it against faster teams, especially in the playoffs. That is where Tavares' weakness. He's he's great positionally uh, on both ends of the ice. He's good at faceoffs. He does all the, the things right. But the knock on him since junior has been his skating. And now he's in his 30s. So that that is going to be where, you know, I wonder if, and I think the the plan all along was to move him to the wing. I just don't think that they can while he's making the money that he's yeah, making. Yeah, that died, eh? When, mm -hmm. well, when he goes to, like, I, I don't know, there's already talk about his next deal, and I know he wants to stay here, and I think the Leafs would like to keep him. If John Tavares is your third line center, and he's making five or six million dollars on a $95 million cap, everybody's happy. That's fine. Or he's a winger. Everybody's happy. That's fine. Because he's a winger who can play center. Did you center give him five times five? Sure, absolutely. All day. That takes him to like 40. Yeah, but I, I look at what's 5 million and I'm not counting on another once in a in a century pandemic to happen in the next 10 years. Um, what's, you know, what's the cap going to be? Is it 105? Is it 110? There's no guarantees, but if he's less than 5% of the cap, it's not about the number, it's percentage of cap, right? That's how they negotiate these deals. So I don't, I, I really don't care about the number. The number would be fine. They do need to figure out after next season who's going to be the second center behind Matthews because it isn't going to be Tavares because if it is Tavares, then you got a problem. And I don't, they have nobody in the minors that can do it. They don't have one. So they're going to have to go find one yeah. and they're going to have to pay a fortune for it. That is the Leafs' biggest problem. It's not Tavares' regression. It's who is going to be center number two and and keep up with Matthews because he's going to have to play with Nylander or Marner, whoever this next center is going to be. Nice if it was Willie, but he's not a center. Cool, not a center. So you got to figure something out. Eleven point five. They figured it out before, because remember it was Matthews and Bozak. Yep. They'll figure it out again. Matthews. That's what they're paid for, right? So that's my opinion. Um, one quick thing: Connor Bedard was skating today. Unbelievable! Uh, seven days post surgery, he's on the ice. <laughs> Uh, and the other thing is Pierre Little Plastic War Dollies writes on Discord. They would love for Adam. Adam, I don't know if you if you have knowledge of this. Uh oh. But they'd love for you to do a deep dive on the powerful families in Canada. And are you familiar with the Irving family of yes, New Brunswick? Absolutely. I'm from yes, New I Brunswick, do. Pierre writes. And the newspapers there refuse to write bad stories about them because they own all the newspapers. They also own the radio stations out there. Do you have stories about the Irving family? I don't that have you any can publicly I don't say. Do you have any stories about them? I know that the the there was when I worked out there. There was like Chum Radio, which became CTV Globe Media. There was the Evanoffs. There was which are another media family. There was um, Stingray, which at that time was called New Cap as a Newfoundland Capital Media. They that family was interesting. The Steele family because they owned. A bunch of car dealerships and are like, why don't we buy some radio stations? How do you know that? And then they, well, because I worked in radio, yeah. right? And then the Irving family, and they were known because they paid people well. Like, you know, small market radio, you don't get paid great money, right? You just don't. In fact, in radio generally now, you don't get paid money very, uh, very well, most of the time. Um, the Irving family, I all I know about them is that they, at the time, paid well, some of their stations were successful and they owned a bunch of like oil drills off, off the coast. And I'm like, mm -hmm. well, oil drills off the coast means billions of dollars. Um, so yeah, I don't know any stories about them. No, nothing. Any and it's chance, not because they bought, it's not because they own me. I actually don't. Any chance if I give you the heads up, we could do a little corner on powerful families in Canada, like Pierre. Sure, sure. I'd have to actually do some research on that because um, so they do stay in the shadows. Yeah. Canadian, Canadian rich people don't like you knowing who they are because there's this perception like there aren't billionaires in canada but oh there are there are plenty of billionaires. very rich families here. well you know how they get rich they uh turn the heat off on the entire upper floor <laughs> of <the> office <laughs> yeah there. are there any particular families that off the top of your head you'd like to go into well i think i think the 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 thompson family is interesting they own the jets uh the winnipeg jets uh there are the thompson like thompson of thompson reuters you know, the news agency. Oh, yeah. They owned so many newspapers when newspapers were profitable and media outlets and stuff. So they made all their money that way. I think they're a top 50 richest family in the world. Um, same. <laughs> same. I think same. obviously the Rogers family is really interesting. Uh, like there's a there's a station in Toronto called CFRB and the RB in it stands for Rogers Battery List because they sold battery -less, um radios. That's how they started making money. 
they started in radio, like making physical radios uh, in the 1920s or 30s. And, and that was back when, by the way, when you owned a radio, you had to have a license to have that radio. <laughs> in, in Britain, you still have to have a license to own a radio or a television. In Canada, you no longer do. But yeah, they used to be like, you'd have to go get a license and they caught you without it, you'd get fined. Um, so Roger's battery list, battery, battery, battery list, battery list. That's it. Uh, you know, the keg mansion, mm-hmm. Yes, that's where CFRB used to broadcast out of the keg mansion is a gigantic old mansion on Jarvis street in, uh, I thought it was Toronto. Haunted. What's that? I thought it was haunted. Uh, my- <laughs> Isn't it supposed to be haunted? Two things can be true. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. <laughs> Thanks. I thought it was haunted. Uh, I mean, like. And then you got like newer money, like like Ann Lauer, who who is self made, right? Made him, yeah. did it himself. Um, yeah, he's real estate, right? He's uh, he's actually frozen trucks. Oh, yeah. Uh, so Michael Ann Lauer in university was in the distribution center for McCain's in Toronto because mm. he went to I think he went to U of T. McCain's fries. Well, yeah. So he was he was and, the guy on the, the cake. Mi- on the thing. He was the one deploying the trucks every night. So he would work these, I think they were overnight shifts and he would, he would go out and, and, and he, he learned this and he thought there's gotta be a better way. Mm. And so he started his own company, probably with like one truck. Again, I haven't gone too deep on this and turned it into this monster company. And like every vaccine that was delivered in Canada came in a Michael Anlauer truck because they all, Uh, he did the, he did the freeze trucks with the COVID vax. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So he he and Bill Gates are in cahoots. <laughs> well, he distributed I'm boycotting the sends. Yeah, Aaron I Rod- will never go to another <laughs> send. All right, I'm hitting the button. Aaron Rodgers hates him. All right, I'm hitting the button. Head coach, yeah, There's Anthony Fauci. <laughs> <laughs> We're in a good place, and then. Uh, yeah. Anyway, hey, we'll be back Tuesday and don't, or sorry Thursday, Wednesday, and don't you forget Frontenac this weekend. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W-Y-L-D-E, and at Jesse Blake. Connection complete.